year long. A big divisional rivalry, Eastern Michigan and Northern Illinois this afternoon here at Husky Stadium. And with these two division rivals, they are about as even as you can get coming into this one. Both still vying to stay within touch of first place in their division. Toledo sets the pace. And both the Eagles and the Huskies need a win today to stay over 500 in division play. And welcome everybody along with Forrest Connolly. I'm Doug Sherman. So glad you're with us here today. And truly, we are at the midpoint of the season, and both of these teams still have a lot to play for. Well, both these teams come into this ball game on two game winning streaks. Both of these teams feel really good about where they are, and both are still in the fight for a conference championship. Albeit some things have to happen outside of their control, they are still in it. They just have to worry about what they can control, and that is today's ball game. Today, under uh, windy conditions, and Terry run game for NIU will be key. Well, he does all the intangibles. He's got the speed, the balance, the agility, and the vision to take it to the house. So Eastern Michigan will have to do a good job of keeping an eye on him and keeping a hat on a hat to not let him get out of control and do what he does best. Meanwhile, one of the guys trying to keep him in check for Eastern Michigan, Micah Coleman. Well, Micah Coleman has extreme length at six foot five, 250 pounds, six tackles, one sack, one tackle for loss, one quarterback hurry last week. He is a gamer. He's a guy that the Northern Illinois offensive line has to do a good job of blocking on the outside. And it'll be interesting to see how those tackles do if they can keep their shoulders square to the line of scrimmage and not give up a short corner because that is what he's looking for to get to the quarterback. And as you can see, it's going to be a challenge for the quarterbacks of the passing games today. 62 degrees feels much colder despite the sunshine because of that wind. And so for the quarterbacks and for the kickers, it won't be easy. That's Austin Smith, the quarterback for Eastern Michigan, and Rocky Lombardi, the starting quarterback for Northern Illinois. Eastern Michigan won the uh, coin toss and deferred, and so will kick off from the 35-yard line left to right. With the wind, it carries all the way back into the end zone, Billy Dozier made the catch, but it'll come out to the 35-yard line, and we are underway here at Husky Stadium. Well, there's Rocky Lombardi, the Michigan State grad transfer who spent three years in East Lansing, and he is now a three-time captain of this team, and he's got a really high ceiling. He's a veteran who can get things done. He definitely can, and I think it all revolves again around Ontario Brown. If he can get that rushing attack going, he allows Lombardi to have man coverage on the outside, one-on-one -on -one coverage, and that's what every quarterback looks for and loves is the opportunity to go vertical with the passing game. On the year, he is completing 58% of his passes, six touchdowns, four interceptions, but he has been solid the last three weeks. They open up with a jet sweep, keeping the ball on the ground, a big hit at the 32-yard line, and it is a... First down run by Trayvon Rudolph. And and we're we're going to see a lot of that. And one of the things you'll see early with this Northern Illinois ball club is they have many, many formations. So for the defense for Eastern Michigan, you've got to play your keys. You can't get caught up with the eye candy, all of the pre-snap movement. You have to play your keys. The single setback is Ontario Brown. Third leading rusher in the MAC at nearly 93 yards per carry. Trying to find Brock Lampy, and that play was blown up by the man we highlighted off the top from the uh, defensive end, Micah Coleman. And that, do you see the athletic ability here? The play is designed to allow Micah Coleman to flash down towards the quarterback, but he's athletic enough to recognize that this was a play action pass and he got up the field to the quarterback. So you have to get a hat on a hat. You cannot trick him. He's a very intelligent player, and you saw it on that play. Both coaching staffs this week repeatedly pointed out how good Coleman is now and that he is just scratching the surface. On third down. Lombardi with time. Dumps it off over the middle. A big hit. After the first down is picked up. Nice job to hold out of the football by Gavin Williams out of the backfield for a five-yard pickup. And my notes on Joe Sparacio is square chin, and you see it right there. That is a football play. That is an old school line him up, head on a hat. Good job. Almost could be considered targeting because he hit with the crown of his helmet. So it'll be interesting to see if they take a look at that. Well, whistles blow from the officials, and we will see. 
Well, that man is the tackling leader in the MAC. He is fourth in the country at 11.6 tackles per game. Pass. The previous play is under review for a potential targeting foul. And if indeed Barasio is found guilty of targeting, that will be a huge blow to this defense for EMU. Definitely a huge blow. But when you look at the player, I think what they're looking at, one, did he launch? He did hit with the crown of his helmet. And I think that is what they're looking at right now. And from what I see, the angle that I see, it looks like targeting because of him hitting with the crown of his helmet. Now, he did hit him in the chest. But once again, this is for the safety of the players. You want players to keep their head up with the, when they're making a tackle. You'd rather see his face mask hit the chest as opposed to the crown of the helmet hit the chest of the uh, offensive player. So it's going to be interesting to see what the replay officials determine on this play. But I think that crown of the helmet is what they're looking at right now, and that will be the final determination as to whether or not this is deemed a targeting play. El Sparacio is a second-year grad transfer. He spent uh, time at Boston College, but his playing time declined after Steve Adazio was fired. Joe is a coach's kid. His dad, Billy, was a running back at Colgate University back in the day. And Joe is a playmaker, just a missile, a fast, aggressive, competitive player. And kind of a neck roll guy. Both of their linebackers bring that sort of mentality right from the start. And you talk about if he gets kicked out of this game, he's fourth in the country in tackles at 11.6 per game. So that would be a huge loss. And you can say, see uh, head coach Chris Creighton hoping for that not to be the case. But he and Chase Klein, the two linebackers, are one and two in the league and fourth and sixth nationally. 11.6 tackles a game and 11.5 tackles per game and they are continuing to check to see if Joe Sparacio is going to be called for targeting. And if you're Eastern Michigan that is not a good sign because I think we got our answer. After you it's been determined that there is a targeting defense. So one minute and eight seconds into the game Eastern game. Michigan loses one of its heart and soul guys to targeting. Well, they lose their leading tackler, and once again, he hit with the crown of his helmet, and you basically got a defenseless player. And so this is for the protection, not only for the offensive player, but for the defensive player as well, because you can hurt yourself hitting someone like that with the crown of your helmet. And so now, Zach Mochan, Elijah Williams, Luke Cameron, the other backup linebackers will have to fill some huge shoes alongside Chase Klein for the rest of the afternoon. With the penalty into Eastern Michigan territory, the pass a little bit behind Trayvon Rudolph, the leading receiver available today for the Huskies. And on that play, I think if Lombardi calms down, and I think when you look at quarterbacks sometimes, when you see your guy wide open, uh, like he, what Rudolph was on that play, you get excited and you let the ball go. But you've got to be able to gauge this win because it's a very strong wind out here, and you need to lead your players. So I think if he led Rudolph on that play, he'd still be running because there was no defender in front of him. Well, Northern Illinois is driving into this wind. Direct snap. Brown keeps the play alive and gets dropped at about midfield for a loss of a yard. Once again, number 11 in the backfield making plays for Eastern Michigan. And a good job by the interior defensive players, Peyton Price, uh, Tim Grant Randall. They did a good job of getting pushed in the middle of that offensive line, forcing Brown to try and bounce it to the outside where Michael Coleman was waiting on it. Play is under review. I think on the previous play, you had 12 men on the field. Eastern Michigan had a player trying to run off the field, and I was surprised we didn't see the flag because he was still on the field when the ball was snapped. I agree. Saw the same thing, and it appeared that he still had one more step to go to reach the far sideline when the ball was snapped. And so another review. Northern Illinois comes in having not turned the football over in its last two games. Just one penalty in the upset win against Ohio last week. Playing clean football. They are 3-4 and four overall on the year. 2-1 and one in the Mac West. And head coach Thomas Hammock in his fifth year truly bleeds Cardinal in black. Former star running back himself, now 42 years old. 
Now we've got another look. Watch the top of the screen. I Certainly think... looked like the defensive player was still on the field when yes. the ball was snapped. Now for Eastern Michigan, they've just got to settle down. You lose your top tackler, uh, and that affects your defense. After a few minutes, we need to settle down. Defense. So we have a legal and substitution. Defense. It's a five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Second down. So again, we'll freeze it as the ball was snapped. You see at the 40-yard line. The Eagle was still clearly on the field. And so a less than clean start to the game defensively for Eastern Michigan. And is now second down in five. Rudolph the motion man. Lombardi hands it off. Running left tackle with lots of room. And Terry O'Brown inside the 25-yard line. And this is what makes him such a dangerous runner. He allows the blocks to develop. He follows his blockers up the field, and then when he gets into the open field, he breaks tackles. So you have to make sure you get a hat on the hat when Ontario Brown is running and coming up through the hole. After the 20-yard pickup, they get the ball into the hands of one of their other playmakers, Rudolph, up the sideline inside the 10-yard line. He picks up 13. And it looks like it could be first and goal. They're going to mark him out of bounds right at the 10. And you see what Northern Illinois is doing. They're lining up on the football. Once again, all the formations that they use. They keep the same personnel in the ball game. So the defense has to be able to react and be able to respond to what they see. Northern Illinois wide receiver. Anderson able to pick his way down to the seven yard line. Well, they're going to mark him down at the eight. But in this situation, I think about the height for the receiving room for the Huskies. You've got Davis Patterson at 6'4", Grayson Barnes at 6'5", the leading tight end, Chris Carter, 6'7". You would think there might be mismatches on a jump ball. The one thing that's difficult about that right now is the wind. Yes. So when you throw that jump ball, the wind can get the ball and bring it down or can take the ball where you don't want it to go. So you have to kind of be mindful of that if you're looking to throw that jump pass. They did mark it at the seven, so second and goal. Rudolph again, the receiver in motion. The running back, Gavin Williams, goes out into the flat, takes the pass, turns, and meets a couple of Eagle defenders who tackle him at the five-yard line. A gain of two. That'll bring up third down and goal. And a good job by the Eastern Michigan defense keeping everything in front of them, being able to ID where the ball is going. One of the guys I look for when they're down in the red zone is Brock Lampy, number 49. He does an excellent job of blocking at the point of attack and creating opportunities for his offensive teammates. No doubt, Lampy is your guy, although I don't see him on the field on third and goal for this play. Lombardi dropping straight back, has plenty of time, pumps. Still looking into the end zone, throws, and it's incomplete to bring up fourth down and five, but there is a flag on the play. And you see how the wind took the ball on that play. And I think that's the difficulty you're going to see throughout the afternoon. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense, number zero. Half the distance to the goal, automatic, first down. And he made contact with the quarterback, Hellman, and I think that is why they made that call. You cannot make contact above the shoulders on the quarterback. It's not a huge, you know, it's not a, a, a you know, a just an abnormal contact, but you cannot make that contact above the shoulders of a quarterback. And once again, that's to protect the players. I know defensive players don't like it. He's making Kick a field goal with this wind out of the eye formation. Brown spins off a tackle in the end zone. Touchdown, Northern Illinois. And a good job by the offensive tackle 
uh, excuse me, offensive line getting pushed at the point of attack. And once again, that guy, Lampy, the guy I was talking about earlier, number 49, you see him coming through, leading the way, bam. He makes contact with the linebacker in the hole, allowing Brown to cut off of that block and get to the end zone. Elijah Williams did everything he could to try and stop the play, but once again, he made contact at the point of attack, allowing Brown to bounce to the outside and get the touchdown. Northern Illinois in this big divisional game scores on a 76-yard drive, 7-0 Huskies. We love our house. The outdoor space is great, but we do have invasive weeds. I think we got in the house. I think you're right. Stay away from my family. Why are you... At least Geico makes bundling my home and car insurance easy. We save so much. You want me to get the spray stuff? Get the spray stuff. Where is it? He's up here! For bundling made easy, go to geico.com. There's DNA. Then there's heavy duty DNA. H DNA. It's what every GMC Sierra HD driver is born with and it's engineered into every aspect of the GMC Sierra HD with the pulling power to prove it. The new 2024 GMC Sierra HD. Toe hitches of the world, prepare for glory. Fashion always came easy to me, but when the fashion critics told me to play it safe, I decided to call an audible. Does that make me a fashion icon? Sure, but inspiration is everywhere if you're listening. Ignite your imagination. Audible. Hey, deal lovers. Coming in. Here's something new. Having good taste shouldn't cost you a good deal. And in this hut, $7 gets you both. The all-new $7 deal lovers menu at Pizza Hut. Because it's only a deal if you love it. I'm coming in hot. Back into Cal, Illinois, where the Huskies get on the board first under the direction of Thomas Hammett, who 13 years ago told then Deputy AD Sean Frazier he would someday be NIU's head coach. Well, eight years later, AD Sean Frazier made a profit and a head coach out of Hammett as his team looking to get back to 500 on the season and move to three and one in the division. And on the flip side, Chris Creighton trying to fire up his troops after a sloppy start to the football game. Hits two linebackers who they rely so much on. One has been ejected for targeting Joe Sparacio, and the other, Chase Klein, on third down, was the one who had roughing the quarterback that allowed for the drive to continue and for the Huskies to punch it in. Both of those young men play with a lot of aggression, and I don't think there was anything intentional on both plays. They're just hard nosed football players trying to make a play for their ball club, and for Klein, losing his partner in the middle, Sparacio. He probably is thinking, I've got to step it up a little bit more than I am already stepping it up with over 11 tackles a ball game to make up for the loss of my wrecking crew partner in the middle. Big hit at the 35-yard line, driving the return man backwards. Dante McMillan, one of the... Backup running backs was just absolutely drilled. And that was a great play by number 37, Joey Retain, uplifting and driving him. And that's what you want to do to those returners. You've got to remember, this is a ball club that has three returns for touchdowns this season, five since 2020. So you want to make sure you put a hat on a hat on that return team and let them know this is not going to be one of those ball games where you get another one of those returns. Well, in a homecoming game for Samson Evans, he gets the start at tailback alongside the quarterback, Austin Smith. First play from scrimmage for this offense is a pass play. The pass is complete across the 35-yard line. And a big hit by Jacob Finley. 
on the tackle after a four yard pickup and there was Austin Smith a dual threat quarterback a junior from Ellenwood Georgia who he needs to take care of the football here today he does and I like what the coaching staff did early give him an easy pass start to build that confidence you want to get your quarterback into a rhythm so I like that early quick pass that they started this ball game off offensively with. And now Jalen Jackson is in there at running back. Ball comes loose. Smith picks it back up. And he fires again. Incomplete. A good lucky bounce for Austin Smith that that football came right back to him. It's interesting that they started out with two pass plays and they're trying to go with the play action pass on this play. He tried to go with the pump fake, but the ball got away from him. He was able to not panic get possession of the football and throw it out of bounds but very interesting in a game with the wind that we're seeing out here that they come out and pass the ball on the first two plays they're down in six Smith looking left the whole way finds an open man and it's a first down and more inside the 40 yard line goes Blake Daniels and out of bounds on a big pass play from Austin Smith. And this is one of the things that the Northern Illinois coaching staff talked to us about the tight ends for Eastern Michigan and being able to keep an eye on those guys because they've got two tight ends uh, with great size. They do a good job of finding pockets in the zone and sitting down for their quarterback. You see on that play, Blake Daniels is able to squeeze the football and then he has the athletic ability to turn to the outside and get up the field. Samson Evans back in the backfield. The fourth leading touchdown maker among all active college football players rumbles ahead inside the 20 yard line. And nice movement by the offensive line on that play. Everybody's firing out with the flat back. Guys are making contact on that second step and they're getting movement at the point of attack. Samson Evans from nearby Crystal Lake, Illinois. It's about an hour from here. He uh, is said to have roughly 50 friends and family members who have come here to Husky Stadium to root on the former Iowa Hawkeye. And they say he is much closer to 100 percent. He's been dinged up this year. Keep giving it to the big man. He's got that running style that will just keep those feet moving. Four touchdowns in his last three games. And that'll bring up third down and manageable in the red zone. And Samson Evans is one of those fall forward backs. No matter how hard he gets hit, no matter if there's nothing there, he's going to fall forward. And that's what you look for from your power backs. Interesting enough, 34 career touchdowns all rushing. The all-time touchdown maker in the history of this Eastern Michigan program. One of the legends to ever wear the Eastern Michigan football uniform former high school quarterback but a running quarterback at that they just keep feeding in the football and to positive results a first down for Eastern Michigan what Eastern Michigan is doing they're making Northern Illinois think because they're going two tights to the left side of the formation but they're running to the weak side of the formation with the running back so when you've got those two tights you make the defense react to that and load that side but they're running opposite of that and I would think now inside the 15 yard line you would just keep feeding it to number 22. He was asked to give his senior share to the team last night on this homecoming which is a, a weekly event for Chris Creighton to pick out one of his seniors to tell the teammates what football means to him. Here goes number 22 again with those square shoulders inside the 10 yard line. Big pickup on first down. And right now, this offensive line is doing a good job of settling in and continuing to win at the point of attack. You see black jerseys going backwards. Watch the green and white jerseys. Watch the white jerseys with the green, excuse me, with the gray numbers. Watch how they fire off with flat backs. Four carries for 17 yards on this drive for Samson Evans. Smith. Gives it to Evans inside the five falls forward to the two yard line going to be very near a first down. And indeed it is a first and goal 
on the fifth run of this drive for Samson Evans. Well, how about this? The uh, active rushing touchdown leader in the country from Michigan, Blake Corum, has 43. Then Garrett Schrader from Syracuse and Rasheen Ali from Marshall have 35. And Evans could join them for the second most if he punches it in here. Which I feel very confident he's going to get the football. I would keep giving it to number 22 in white as well. Indeed they do. Evans able to get close. There's the signal. Touchdown. Eastern Michigan. Career touchdown number 35 for Samson Evans. And you see, once again, watch the offensive line firing off the football, movement at the point of attack. Right where Evans is running the football, you see black jerseys in the end zone. That is what you're looking for from your offensive line on the goal line. You want to see those guys basically get on all fours and bear crawl and uproot those defenders to get them pushed backwards. Jesus Gomez with the PAT. It is good. So a nine play 65 yard drive capped off by Samson Evans. He's familiar with the end zones in the back and he's gotten there one more time. At L'Oreal Group, we support innovative projects that help restore damaged ecosystems. More than 2 million acres of ecosystems will be restored by 2030. This is how we create the beauty that moves the world. Your first home sees a lot of firsts. From first loves to first steps. Sure, it can be a handful at times, keeping you up at night. Come on now. But with help from the Home Depot, Thank you very much. you'll find the confidence to create the first place you call your own. The Home Depot. How doers get more done. There's a saying in Louisiana that's been handed down for generations. Pass a good time. It means whenever friends and family get together, good times and good food is definitely on the table. Tony Sachery's famous Creole seasoning has always been part of that celebration. Whether it's in the kitchen or at the table, it adds authentic Louisiana flavor to your favorite foods and smiles to your favorite faces. So remember to pass a good time and the Tony Sachery's. Tony Sachery's makes everything taste great. To some folks, college football is a few humdrum hours on a Saturday. To the rest of us, it's sacred. It's a yearly pilgrimage to the hills of Rocky Top. It's having your own safe haven. Deep behind enemy lines. A place to reunite with your actual family of five and your chosen family of 105,000. So go on there, get together, and turn all those away games into home games in a verbo all your own. Football away, baby. To know hockey is to love hockey. The NHL on ESPN and ESPN+. So oh, racing. Seven seven, our score, and you see the wrench on the shoulder of the player in the background there. That is not just a prop; that is a symbol of this Eastern Michigan football program. Better than 50 pounds, and in game, it never touches the ground. It's also been to the top of Pike's Peak. It's a big part of the camaraderie built by head coach Chris Creighton that every one of his seniors and his new staff members go to Colorado each July and summit. Pikes Peak. That's 13 and a half miles in altitude to 14,115 feet. And that wrench goes along with it. And I find it interesting hearing everybody's got a story in the program. If you have been around Coach Creighton, he's been doing this sort of thing for better than a quarter century. And I love that his defensive coordinator, Ben Needham, told us this week, yeah, I like Coach Creighton, but I was cursing him for the first eight hours. And then I stopped cursing him because I passed out. Those are big man problems, and that is why I told Coach Creighton I would not do that. There are certain things that you have to understand as a big man are your limitations, and climbing a mountain uh, is one of those things that we just don't do. And there is Coach Needham. He said he woke up on the mountain with 20 people staring down at him. He was quite proud of the fact, though, that he didn't need to be airlifted out. He got himself back up and back down the mountain. <laughs> Well, that's pride. Pride <laughs> will get you back down that mountain because you'll never be able to live down them having to send a helicopter up there to get you. Well, Coach Needham 
back in 2018 as a new coach went on that climb. And he didn't quite make it all the way to the top. And I don't think he asked Coach Creighton to say, can I go again the second year? I think one and done, and that was plenty. 526 remaining first quarter. Northern Illinois with the football for the second time here today. Ontario Brown, who a couple of weeks ago received a helmet sticker from the college football final guys on ESPN. He was the Mac West Offensive Player of the Week, and why not? He carried the football just 13 times against Akron and rushed for 280 yards and four touchdowns. And that was an amazing game because I was there to witness it, and he did everything that you could ask for running back to do. Uh, he showed all of the intangibles that you look for in great running backs. Vision, uh, an ability to uh, break tackles, strength, uh, speed when he got to the outside and that bounce out ability when the play wasn't there as it was drawn up. Four touchdowns that day. And we will take a break with timeout on the field. 520 remaining in the quarter. Imagine a lifetime spent waiting. Waiting for a family. Waiting to be loved. Older and special needs shelter dogs wait the longest to find loving people. That's why Subaru and our retailers have donated over $51 million to support over 420,000 animals. Subaru, more than a car company. There's a saying in Louisiana that's been handed down for generations. Pass a good time. It means whenever friends and family get together, good times and good food is definitely on the table. Tony Sachery's famous Creole seasoning has always been part of that celebration. Whether it's in the kitchen or at the table, it adds authentic Louisiana flavor to your favorite foods and smiles to your favorite faces. So remember to pass a good time and the Tony Sachery's. Tony Sachery's makes everything taste great. This is not just a shot. This is protection made easy for those who've got plans. Get your free flu and COVID-19 vaccines in one trip. into the press box of this stadium, Husky Stadium, that has been here since the mid-1960s. On a blustery day in DeKalb, Illinois, with Forrest Conley, I'm Doug Sherman. This university is celebrating the anniversary 60 years ago. Northern Illinois won a national championship for small colleges in football. That was 60 years ago, and that was kind of the catalyst to getting this facility built within the couple of years after that in the mid-1960s. Rocky Lombardi at quarterback, and keep an eye on number 49 in black. Again, I think that's Forrest's favorite. It's clearly your favorite Husky. Is he your favorite Mac player this year? They run the other way on second down, a short pickup. I would say so because of all of the little things that he does. He's just a football player. When you talk about guys that Time want out. to do whatever it takes. Eastern Michigan, they're second at the half. Please put five minutes on the clock. When you talk about guys that just do all of the little things to help your team win, he can have a great game and not touch the ball the entire ball game. 
and that's what I think makes him stand out. I've seen plays where he's blocked two or three players at a time on a particular play, and he does all of the dirty work. You know, you see guys nowadays, they want to get all the shine. They want to get the football. They want to score the touchdowns. Of course, I think he would love to do that. And when an opportunity presents itself, he does. But when the opportunity is not there to score, per se, with him carrying the football, he is just as excited to make that play happen for his teammates. But he can make it for himself. He had a touchdown at Boston College that gave NIU a 21-7 lead. Of course, the Huskies went on to win that game in overtime, taking down their ACC rival. But Lampy, when he gets the football, he's money on third down and short. And as you say, does all the little things that a former walk-on from Kenosha, Wisconsin might do. Now on scholarship, one of 21 former walk-ons now on scholarship for Northern Illinois. Flag comes behind the play as the Eastern Michigan defense loads up and pushes the ball carrier back to the 25-yard line. And once again, they are stout at the point of attack and not allowing the defenders to get movement. Now the Eagles say they came away with the football and indeed, Chase Klein is holding it. And if you look to the right side of your screen, you're going to see a blocker engaged. Excuse me, this is the left side of your screen. You can't be engaged and have another blocker come and make contact with that individual. Yeah, the right tackle, Nolan Potter went low, and Pete Nigra, number 50, the center, stayed high. So that's your chop block. And drops it to fourth down. And a short six, and that brings the punt team out. Tom Foley boots it away, and it lands at about the 35-yard line. And will come to rest at about the 29-yard line, as Hamzi El Zayat didn't want any part of that. ESPN Plus is the home for more than 40 MAC football games and plenty of women's soccer matches, including these tomorrow. Akron hosts Miami, Ohio, and Toledo hosts Kent State, both at 1 Eastern. And next Saturday, the featured college football game is a Michigan MAC trophy matchup. Western takes on Eastern at 1 Eastern. If you're a MAC fan, go to ESPNplus.com to sign up. By the way, that castle is Altgelt Hall. One of four at universities in this state, built by the former governor, John Alkel. He apparently liked castles, so one of the beautiful structures here in DeKalb. Try to run to the left side. Austin Smith couldn't get to the edge, able to pick up two yards. And something to keep an eye on, Austin Smith has a little hitch in his giddy right now, so let's see if that's going to affect him being able to perform at the quarterback position. But a good job of him getting to the outside, getting as many yards as he can, and getting out of bounds on a play that had nothing going for it. Samson Evans, the running back. Tanner Canoe, their top receiver in motion. He takes the pitch, gets hit out of bounds, and a flag comes. Just a terrible play defensively for the Huskies. And number two, Javon Berg, you have to know better than that. He's out of bounds. You've got to just let him go. I know you want to make a play, but you cannot make contact with the player once he's been established as being out of bounds. Well, Northern Illinois, rightly so, makes a lot out of its former walk-ons. Here's a former walk-on, Tanner Canoe. And I think for Bird, it's teetering on the edge, but you knew he was going out of bounds. So I understand why the officials made that call. There could be an argument made that he partially was in bounds, but at the same time, you knew he was going out of bounds. So, Bird, you cannot make those type of plays and give them, you know, better field position and an easy first down. That moves the Eagles out to the 46 yard line. And expect a heavy dose of Can Tanner Canoe, number one of the Mac in catches per game. He has caught a pass in 31 consecutive games. Smith to the air, goes the other way. J.B. Mitchell the third. Out of bounds at about the 43-yard line. That'll move the chains. First down, Eagles after a pickup of nine. And Smith looks pretty comfortable passing the football in this win. 
He came into this game last week. He had nine. Uh, he was nine of 25, 36 percent, 118 yards. And, but he looks very comfortable right now passing the football. The receivers are doing a good job of giving him good targets to throw to. And it'll be interesting to see if next quarter Eastern Michigan is as wanting to throw the football because they are with the wind here in the first. Jackson nowhere to go and he gets drilled at the 46 yard line. And that play was made by the defensive tackle James Esther number one. He got penetration into the backfield allowing the linebackers and everyone else to flow downhill. That's what you want from your interior defenders to get pushed at the point of attack not allowing those guards or centers to climb up to your second level defenders. And the Eastern Michigan coaches said of the two defensive tackles for Northern Illinois Esther and O'Malley they're a problem. Second and 11. Smith under pressure gets rid of the football. It's caught, but no yards after the catch for Blake Daniels, who was dropped right in place after just a three yard pickup. And you see what Northern Illinois is doing. They walk Tyler Jackson, number zero, the linebacker, up into the gap, but at the snap of the football, he dropped back into coverage. That's what you want to do. Then Lafayette as well. So you want to walk those linebackers up. You want to give the offense, you know, something different than what you're actually playing because you want to make it a guessing game. You want those linemen to try and figure out and decide, decipher who they're going to block and mess up their blocking schemes. After the official gets the football back in place, following the wind blowing it out of place, we're ready for third down. Smith has a clean pocket. Contact as the ball was getting there, but no flag. Trying to find Terry Lockett Jr., a junior receiver from Minneapolis. He went down as the pass was in flight, but no flag. And they brought the blitz in that play, but I thought the offensive line did a pretty good job. I thought Smith could have stepped up in the pocket. The tackles need to do a better job of keeping the width of that pocket. So that means they've got to keep their shoulders square to the line of scrimmage, get three kick steps backwards. Then you can turn and run those defensive ends past the level of the quarterback. But if they get width in the pocket, they allow him to have a little bit more time. But I did think he had a little bit of space to step up in the pocket and make a better throw. Mitchell Tomasek, one of the better punters in the MAC, trying to angle it out of bounds, able to get it downed inside the five yard line. Tomasek has a huge leg, but he's also got the touch and ability to do exactly that. And I like what the offensive player did. He waited and he got the football. He didn't give it a chance. It looked like it was going to box out of bounds, but he made sure to get that down inside the five. Sometimes guys try to get it all the way down to the one or zero yard line right before it gets to the end zone and they lose it and the ball actually bounces into the end zone. So you have to be careful. So I like what he did down in that ball on the three yard line. Now Thomasak was a record setting quarterback at Worthington Kilbourne High School in Columbus. His great grandfather played football at Ohio State. He is a punter and gives the football back after a 38 yard punt downed inside the five yard line. Rocky Lombardi hands it off and Terry O'Brown forward progress out near the 10 yard line for the junior out of Beach High School from Savannah Georgia give him five on the carry and you see the defense for Eastern Michigan showing that bear look they've got all the offensive linemen covered basically 11 players down in the box the thing that's dangerous about that it's good to stop the run but if you get a player like Ontario Brown to the second level and there's no one there you know now you have trouble so they have to be careful they have to make sure they get stops at the point of attack because you don't want to allow him to get to the second level and there's no defenders there to stop him. Lombardi decides to run the football and gets crunched by a couple of defenders Micah Coleman came in to finish him off. But I thought that was a good job by Lombardi, recognizing what he needed to get the first down. He saw the yards there. He did not try and force it because, once again, he's throwing against the wind. So you don't want to try and force the football. Your job is to get the first down, get, keep the drive moving, and then when the second quarter comes, you can focus on throwing the ball because you'll be throwing with the wind. And it seemed like he bobbled the snap at the start as well. Throws things panic. off, so he did the smart thing. Exactly. A lot of times quarterbacks panic when they bobble the snap. He did a good job of gaining control of the football and doing what he needed to do to get the first down. So now the Wildcat 
Ontario Brown waits for his blockers, and that then allows the defensive players to come and take him down. Nicely well defended. That'll be our final play of the quarter. After a three-yard loss, this is the we will head to break. An even first 15 minutes at Husky Stadium. On a windy day in DeKalb, the ground games are dominating. Tied at seven, Eagles and Huskies. How easy is life in the new Buick Encore GX? Piece of cake. I was gonna say easy as pie, but that's way better. Backing up, with your Buick, it's a walk in the park. Or, you know, a kayak in the park. <laughs> Staying connected is a breeze, with Wi-Fi and unlimited data. What's the password? You'll be hearing that a lot. Life's easier in the new 2024 Buick Encore GX. At Belgard, outdoor living and hardscape design are all about bringing you moments like these. Create your space. Create your moments with Belgard Rooms. Private jetting in the night sky. My man hand glide by with my fried rice. Why? What could you not love? About a slice on the side of the hot tub. G R U B H U B. ESPN Plus gets you ready for the NFL all season long. Get highlights every week with NFL Primetime. And live games return week 11 with a Super Bowl rematch. Stream the NFL all season long with ESPN Plus. We've been living it since day one. Glorious. Beautiful. True. Nothing held back. All for the love of soccer. The king of boxing. The king of MMA. Fury versus Ngannou. Buy it now on ESPN Plus Pay-Per-View. Here's where legends are born. And every match is a spectacle. A celebration like no other. For the love of football. For the love of La Liga. Knowing how filthy Sid's wrister is means knowing why goalies lose 10 pounds of sweat every game. Knowing it's overtime against Connor McDavid is knowing the game's as good as over. Knowing the taste of victory is knowing it tastes best out of one particular cup. Knowing where the season's biggest events can be seen means knowing you'll never miss one. To know hockey is to love hockey. The NHL on ESPN and ESPN+. Plus. Nothing held back. Uh, All uh, for uh, the love of soccer. Start of the second quarter, Eastern Michigan and Northern Illinois. Chris Creighton, his team is looking for its fifth win of the season, but he told us this week, we haven't had our moment yet. We've got four wins, yes, but have yet to feel euphoric. Haven't played well in all phases. Meanwhile, on the other side, Coach Hammock says of Northern Illinois, even though they're very much in the race for the division championship, the dream is still alive of getting to Detroit. He doesn't want to broach that subject right now with his players. That was a little bit shocking to me. When you look around this stadium, you see all the championship banners. This is a team that's two years removed from a conference championship. Uh, so they have those aspirations every season. But one thing, again, Coach Hammock is, you know, everything that embodies NIU football. Oh, yeah. And he gets it. And I think what he's looking at is the new age player and taking it one game at a time and not trying to look too far ahead. Because once again, you can only worry about what you can control. And if you start looking ahead, you start looking at what other teams are doing and what you need to happen outside of what you need to be doing yourselves as a football player. And yeah, Thomas Hammock and his wife, Shanitha, both were students here at Northern Illinois together. That's where they met. The middle name of their son is Douglas, named for the dormitory. Coach Hammock lived in back when he was a star running back. 
Lombardi puts the air underneath it and has a man, but just overthrew his intended receiver, Jalen Johnson. So again, as soon as Northern Illinois gets the wind at its back, they're not afraid to take a deep shot. And they caught him in that bear look. You've got man coverage on the outside. He ran away from the defender. He just put a little bit too much on the football. And once again, when you have it thrown with this win, you cannot gauge how the win is going to carry that football. And you saw the ball start to carry as the receiver got closer to it. Tom Foley with the wind at his back hits a booming punt that sends the return man all the way back to the 10 and quite a break for Eastern that that football made it all the way to the end zone for a touchback. 79 yard punt. Just a remarkable boot for the Minnesota transfer. Well, that flips the field. Could have turned out a lot better for Northern if anybody could have gotten there and covered it. But it took an Eastern bounce into the end zone, so it comes out to the 20 yard line. And now into the wind. I wonder how much they will ask Austin Smith to throw the football. He threw it frequently and was fairly efficient with it. On first down, Samson Evans straight ahead. And he is hit almost immediately. Gets about to the 21 yard line for a pickup of one before being driven back by a host of Husky defenders. And I think what you'll see from the Northern Illinois defense now is more aggressive up the field defense because they are not as afraid of the pass game because now you've got Eastern going into the win. So it'll be more difficult for them to try and pass the ball down the field. So you'll see that box a little bit more crowded and, and they'll focus on stopping the run game that we saw Eastern Michigan have success with early in the first quarter. And we have yet to see Canoe, who is in motion, targeted with a pass, comes in having caught 30 passes this year, most per game in the league. Now they do find him on the screen, and to just get the football into the hands out of the speedy grad student from Mason, Ohio, who grew up primarily playing basketball, he wears the deuce, which for this program means a lot. It usually requires a lot of discussion among the coaching staff who's going to get to wear the number two but this year it was a no brainer that he gets the deuce. And I want to highlight that was a great job by Brian Dooley number 77 to pick up that blitz on the outside. Samson Evans. Just bigger than some of the guys trying to tackle him. Javon Bird at 6'2", 186. Looked like he had a good angle, and he just bounced off the running back. But once again, what Eastern Michigan is doing a good job of is climbing to those second-level defenders. The offensive tackle, the offensive guards are getting up to that second level and covering up those linebackers. And when you're playing against a 4-2-5 defense like both teams run, you're going to have smaller, quicker guys. So when those big fellas get to the second level, they allow for angles for those backs to cut off of. Nine yard pickup for Evans. Keep it on the. No, the fake, the handoff, and the pass deflected and falls incomplete. Jaden Dolphin, the linebacker from Des Plaines, Illinois, coming in to make the big play to deflect the pass from Austin Smith. And Dolphin is one of the more athletic linebackers. He walked onto this team as a safety. So you had some of that quick twitch that you see from back end defenders, and you saw him be able to react and get up in the air and knock that football down. Well, you might remember two years ago, Dolphin had a 59 yard pick six against Eastern Michigan off of a deflected pass. He has those ball skills and the speed to take it to the house. So now third down and one. Evans lowers his shoulders and bruises his way for a first down. And they ran behind number 68 and number 77. And that's the strong part of this offense line. You've got Brian Dooley, the preseason first team All-American, and Alex Howie, a shot putter in high school. So you know he's got strong legs and he's got explosion. Shot putters have to explode when they throw that shot put. So you see the explosion firing off the football from the right side of that offensive line. And Dooley, number 77, two-time team captain, who is tying City South's program record today for both games and games started by an Eastern Michigan offensive lineman. City South, fourth-round draft pick of the New England Patriots last year, now playing for the Pats. 
Evans plows forward for again. It's not flashy. It's not sexy, but it's positive yardage on first down. And I'll tell you what it does. As an offensive lineman, one of the things we love to do is demoralize a defense. And when you just go straight at them, you know, and you just run the football directly downhill between the tackles, and you are successful with that, and you get four and five yards a pop, you start to demoralize that defense and get them on their heels. And you see that. So what that'll do is bring more players down into the box and give the quarterback, Austin Smith, one-on-one -on -one opportunity on the outside. Pressure on the edge, picked up. Smith has another pass deflected, and it winds up hitting the turf, falling incomplete. And what I did not like about that play, Austin Smith is fading back when he's throwing the football. You've got to step into that throw. You've got to be able to realize where those defenders are. Move side to side. Use the pocket to your advantage. He had time in the pocket. Move side to side. You've got to get the ball to your seats. Put a little bit more air under the football. You know where that pressure's coming from. Get away from that. It'll be interesting to see if the Eastern Michigan coaches start to sprint him outside the pocket to give him a little bit more comfort. I don't know if he's comfortable as he needs to be in the pocket right now. That was Dolphin with another tipped pass. So it brings up third down. Eastern three of four today on third. Sets up the screen. Make a man miss El Zion. He's got room with a blocker. Inside the 30, it's punched out of bounds, but goes out of bounds. A big break for Eastern Michigan, but a bigger play puts them inside the red zone. Hamzi El Zayah. And they did a good job of using the aggression of the Northern Illinois defense against them, and a better job of El Zayah breaking that tackle to get to the outside. Tyler Jackson had him tackled, had him lined up, but he was able to break to the outside, and you saw the speed. And once again, he better be lucky he was running towards the out of bounds, towards the sideline, because they punched that ball out. And if he wasn't running that way with that angle, the ball would have still been in play. Yeah, Javon Bird punched it, but out of bounds after a 36-yard pass and run. Evans met right around the line of scrimmage and tackled. But again, it's positive yardage. Devin Lafayette, the linebacker, making the stop. And I'll tell you what I'm looking for soon. Austin Smith to pull that ball out the belly of the uh, running back and get around the edge. Because if you watch the defensive ends, Thomas and Gums are crashing down because they've been successful running Evans between the tackles. So I'd look for Smith to pull that ball out the belly eventually and get around the edge. Now Jalen Jackson, the running back. Smith looking to pass. Flushed. And is tackled as he goes out of bounds by Roy Williams, former high school wrestler at Allen B. Shepherd High School, Crestwood, Illinois. He started the first five games of the year, but he's been replaced by George Gums. But Williams still a key piece of that rotation up front on defense. And a good job by Smith. You know, he got outside the pocket, tried to allow the play to develop, did not see what he liked. Did not see a safe throw, got as many yards as he possibly could, and got out of bounds. That's what you want to see from your quarterback position. If it's not there how it's drawn up, either throw it away or get as many yards as you can and get down. Don't take any unnecessary contact from the defenders. Now let's see if Williams 97 or Thomas number four, the two ends, or somebody else comes. Here comes the blitz. And Smith has to just get rid of the football to bring up fourth down. And they brought one too many defenders for the offense to block, and Smith did all that he could with that football. He got rid of it, tried to get it to a receiver. He saw it was not going to be able to get it to him, so threw it out of bounds, the safe play. But what you have to do as a quarterback, you have to recognize that because the defense will give it away. They'll give you little keys that they're bringing that blitz. Hold that snap count. Allow your offensive line to decipher where the blitz is coming from so they'll have a better opportunity to try and pick up all of those defenders. So a 34-yard field goal into the wind. Jesus Gomez, and it is good. Young man who goes by Zeus or Jesus, either way he's godlike, rips it right through the wind for a 10-7 Eastern Michigan lead. We love our house. It's on a great block, tree-lined streets. The neighbors are observant. And we're back at the Sullivan house. It's lawn day, Sheila, and the leaves are piling up. Ugh, bit of an eyesore. I'll say. Dry shave. Interesting technique. That's going to come back to haunt him. Some people clean while they cook, not these folks. 
At least GEICO makes bundling our home and car insurance easy. Saves us a ton. If only they'd bundled the leads. You know, I wouldn't have pegged these two as yogis. I still don't. For bundling made easy, go to GEICO.com. There's DNA. Then there's heavy-duty DNA. H-DNA. It's engineered into every aspect of the GMC Sierra HD. With the pulling power to prove it. Toe hitches of the world prepare for glory. Wow. Can luxury connoisseurs tell the difference between an expensive mascara and Lash Paradise? Are you ready to put your makeup expertise to the test? This one is the more expensive one. That one is Lash Paradise. I am sold. It's confirmed. You don't have to pay for Lux results. You never know what the weather will bring. Rain-X water repellency wiper blades apply the magic of Rain-X to your windshield. So water beads up and flies away. The improved water beading technology lasts longer. So you see clearly season after season. Let the weather drive you inside? Never. Rain-X. Outsmart the elements. Find Rain-X water repellency wiper blades at these retailers. That looks really high. It is high. Whenever you're ready. Are there any snakes? Nope. You sure? Here we go. It's time to push your limits. <laughs> you're doing great. <laughs> Whoa, is that a buffalo? Maybe yeah, that's a cow. <laughs> the all new Subaru Cross Track Wilderness Adventure on the Edge. The college football playoff semifinals and the college football playoff national championship on ESPN. Back at Husky Stadium in DeKalb, Illinois on a breezy October afternoon. Here's the best chance to win the title according to our All-State playoff predictor. Oklahoma 22 percent, Ohio State 19 percent. Penn State down to 9.2 percent. Florida State at 8.8, .8, Michigan 8.5 entering week eight. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, Mr. I don't Conley, agree with about that. Your I think uh, Florida State should be at 22%. <laughs> maybe Oklahoma, the way that Oklahoma looked today against UCF, you know, there's some questions to be answered uh, with that team, but they are doing very well. That was a great game against Texas. Gabriel, the kid, you know, uh, he's a UCF transfer. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting he got to play against his old teammates, and they were able to pull that out today. Uh, but there's some quality ball clubs right now, and we've got a long way to go. Florida State's got a tough ball game this evening against a Duke ball club with one loss. It'll be interesting to see if the quarterback uh, Leonard plays uh, for Duke this evening, but um, there's a long way to go and there's a lot of great teams and there's some one loss teams that I think are still in it. I think Texas is still in it. I think uh, Alabama's still in it. Uh, so there's just a, a lot of opportunity left for ball clubs and we just got to let this thing play out. He's former Seminoles offensive lineman Forrest Connolly. I'm Doug Sherman. And I thought that was very nicely done by the kick team going into the wind to keep the ball low, but to keep it in bounds and not allow for either a penalty or for a return as we have a media timeout with 8:19 remaining in the second quarter. We'll step away as well. Up by a field goal is Eastern Michigan. I'm not infallible, but my makeup is. Infallible Freshwear Foundation by L'Oreal Paris. Natural, breathable coverage. Resist transfer and heat with up to 24-hour wear. Infallible Freshwear Foundation by L'Oreal Paris. You're worth it. You never know what the weather will bring. Rain-X water repellency wiper blades apply the magic of Rain-X to your windshield. So water beads up and flies away. The improved water beading technology lasts longer so you see clearly season after season. Let the weather drive you inside? Never. Rain-X. Outsmart the elements. Find Rain-X water repellency wiper blades at these retailers. Get ready for hosting at the Home Depot with free delivery on over 2 million items every day so you can refresh your space before Santa or the family comes to town. Get holiday ready with savings at the Home Depot. Hey, wake up. The words in your head, you're the only one that can hear them. Say it. Yes, I can. Move. Feel it. Hold on 
into this feeling. Yes, I can. Yes, I must. Watch me. If you're making a to-do list today, make it easy on yourself. Just write down Reese's. Then write down, eat them. And then, you're kind of done for the day. Raiders Lions, Monday at 8 on ESPN and ABC. Northern Illinois University is just about an hour west of Chicago. That's where we are right now with the hometown Huskies trailing the visiting Eagles of Eastern Michigan by a field goal and on that last kickoff. We went to break because Billy Dozier was a little slow to get up for Northern Illinois. We're glad to see he did pop up and seems to be just fine. The junior from New Lenox, Illinois. Fourth year Husky still looking for his first touchdown, but a key special teams player for Northern Illinois over the course of the last four years for Thomas Hammett. And so the Huskies offense which has yet to really find its rhythm all season. Rocky Lombardi, their three-time captain, was a four-star recruit coming out of Clive, Iowa. Chose Michigan State first. He has his moments and can put up big numbers. And again, with the wind at his back, perhaps this is the quarter where they try to open up the playbook a little bit. To the air on first down, it's caught at about the 31-yard line. A seven-yard pickup to Jalen Johnson. And I think you'll see more of the quick pass game with the wind although they're playing with the wind because the wind will carry the football. We saw that on the long vertical route, the last drive that they had. They had the receiver open, uh, but the wind picked the ball up and took it farther away from the receiver, and he could not get to it. So I think you'll see more of the quick pass game. You want to be able to spin that football out of the quarterback's hands and get it to your receiver. From under center, Lombardi. Brown, not a lot of room to run, gets back to the line of scrimmage and nothing more. And I thought Brown made a poor decision on that play. Should have went to the left side behind his fullback, Brock Lamp. He had an opportunity, he had some space on that side. Uh, I'm surprised that, you know, with the vision that he has and the way that he runs the football effectively, he chose to go to the right side away from his lead blocker. The left guard, J.J. Lippy, number 79, was slow to get up. Fifth-year Husky, third-year starter, had a limp, but he stays in the game. Those offensive linemen are tough. Forrest. Absolutely. Square chain guys. <laughs> you know, that's just a part of what we do. <laughs> <laughs> Third down and four for Northern. Lombardi. Flushed out of the pocket. On the run. Makes a pass. Is it a completion? Indeed it is. First down. And a nice job by Grayson Barnes to go down and secure the football above the turf. But the right tackle, Nolan Potter, number 69, you've got to do a better job of sitting down. He allowed the defender to get under him and push him into the quarterback. You've got to sit down in your stance. How about Gavin Williams making the first man miss, able to get out to the 43-yard uh, line, and now the training staff for Eastern comes Time running onto the field with an eagle slow to get up. Idiot timeout. And we will take a break as well with the training staff doing its thing. At Bellegarde, outdoor living and hardscape design are all about bringing you moments like these. Create your space. Create your moments with Bellegarde Rooms. Get you ready for the NFL all season long. Get highlights every week with NFL Primetime. And live games return week 11 with a Super Bowl rematch. Stream the NFL all season long with ESPN+. Plus. 
Knowing how filthy Sid's wrister is means knowing why goalies lose 10 pounds of sweat every game. Knowing where the season's biggest events can be seen means knowing you'll never miss one. To know hockey is to love hockey. The NHL on ESPN and ESPN+. Plus. Everyone is ready for Monday Night Football. Devontae Adams is ready to lead the silver and black into the lion's den. Jared Goff and the Pride are on the hunt to take control of the NFC North. Raiders, Lions, Monday at 8 on ESPN and ABC. Hey, we some different breeds and I stand on it. Yeah, we be balling too hard, ain't no bench for me. Yeah, baby, I been balling. I'm a problem, that's for sure. The NBA opening week continues tonight on ESPN. Nothing held back. Uh, All uh, for the uh, love of soccer. Eastern Michigan 10, Northern Illinois 7. 6.20 remaining second quarter on that last tackle. Barry Manning, number 39, right there. Suffered what appeared to be a left arm injury. He is in the medical tent right now. He did get up and run off on his own, but in a lot of pain. And so the medical staff is taking a look at him. Hopefully we see number 39 in white back on the field here today. Second down and five for Northern Illinois. Three men in motion. Again, keep your eye on number 49, the fullback, and lead blocker on a lot of plays the Huskies like to do. Running behind him, Ontario Brown. Tried to get the edge, and how about that man? Shooting to make the tackle from out of nowhere. After a three-yard pickup, there was nothing more to be gained. Well, they're showing that bear. Look, you've got cover one, one deep safety, and they've got every other player in the box. So you've got ten players in the box. So you are committed to stopping the run. So when you've got a quarterback like Lombardi, a veteran, he has to recognize that audible out of that and get something down the field. You're going to get the matchup very favorable when you see that, but he's got to recognize that, I think, an audible out of that. Elijah Williams playing because Joe Sparacio was ejected a minute into the game for targeting on that tackle. Lombardi on third down. Incomplete. It appeared that Jalen Johnson had a shot at that, but it just went through, and it brings up fourth down and seven. And that's one of those sideline conversations that receivers have with their quarterback where they tell them, hey, man, don't throw that ball to me again when I've got a defender coming at me like that. You don't want to set your receivers up. And you have to wonder if Johnson heard footsteps because that looked like a ball that he should have been able to catch and try and make a play with. But you've got to know a defender's coming. So you've got to expect that contact. Foley's punt lands out of bounds at around the 10-yard line. We'll see where they mark it. Well, you never know. Jalen Johnson missed NIU's last game. Hasn't played since Toledo. Back from injury, a big part of the receiving core for Northern Illinois. Timeout here in DeKalb. Thanks. Whoa. Jake from State Farm, I really need to know. Uh, go spicy or go home, right? What? No. What if I'm not sure I have the right coverage for my car? Oh, your agent can help me make sure it's just what you need. What if I accidentally hit a food truck and it gets covered in empanadas? You can file a claim on the app. At State Farm, we're there for your what ifs. Thanks. <laughs> oh. Mm. That is too spicy. That's for you. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or click to get a quote today. Boom, 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 boom. Nissan has a car. Boom. Every driver who wants more. More turbo. More freedom. More electric. At Nissan, more is all we do. There's DNA. Then there's heavy duty DNA. HDNA. It's what every GMC Sierra HD driver is born with, and it's engineered into every aspect of the GMC Sierra HD with the pulling power to prove it. The new 2024 GMC Sierra HD. Toe hitches of the world. Prepare for glory. Take your lashes to paradise. My outfit, designer. But my mascara, drugstore. I mean, these results really speak for themselves. Is that not insane? Lash Paradise is that good. I'm obsessed. 
those new tiles are falling right into place until you run out of, what are those called again? Oh, right. The Home Depot app is made for doing that doesn't miss a beat. So you can find what you need fast and keep things moving in the right direction. For doing that doesn't stop, download the Home Depot app. It's made for doing. Hey, Bob, I can't get the game. Oh, you gotta get that antenna, Mike. It's not just football, it's sports and news and all your favorite shows for free. Yes! I gotta get an antenna. Visit the freetvproject.org. Late second quarter in DeKalb, Illinois. Eastern Michigan up 10-7 on Northern Illinois on a windy day. And depending on which way you are driving the football, you either can utilize the passing game or you can't. And right now, Eastern Michigan gets the football back going into that win. And I think we'll see a lot of Sampson Evans on this drive, like we have early in this ball game, running the football between the tackles. And so on the toss sweep, they run on first down. Out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. On the carry, Jalen Jackson, he picks up six yards. In terms of the passing, though, despite the conditions, Austin Smith has been very good, 7 of 11 for 101 yards through the air. And he looks very comfortable passing the football. Smith gives to Jackson, kicks it outside. He is quick. When he puts his foot in the ground, he can make a defender look bad, but not that time. Northern Illinois was ready for him. Ray Thomas, the team's leading tackler, with the stop after a two-yard pickup. Well, it was a good job by Thomas and the other defenders holding that edge and allowing for pursuit to get there. You saw Jackson trying to bounce it to the outside, but they did a good job of not allowing him to get to that edge and get north and south because we know what he's able to do when he gets in the open field with that speed. Yeah, he averages 4.9 yards per carry this season. So now Eastern, third and short, is four of six on third down this afternoon. Sampson back in there. Sampson Evans, that is. And they go to their money man with one man to beat. Able to roll off that initial hit and easily picks up an Eastern Michigan first down. And once again, you see that ball forward ability. He gets in the hole and Deron Gilbert is there, number 23, but he puts his head down. You've got to pick your head up. You've got to get your feet chopping. You've got to make a football play. You cannot just put your head down when Sampson Evans is coming in the hole because he is moving forward. He's going to try to run you over. I'm guessing Deron Gilbert, the last four years at Lafayette, didn't run into as many guys like Samson Evans at that level. Patriot League is a good FCS league, but Samson Evans is a handful. He picks up four, first down, give it back to Evans. You're going to have to double and triple team him every time. If you try to bring him down by yourself, it's not going to work. And that's not where I want to see Evans carrying the football. He's not a bounce it out guy. He's a guy between the tackles. 30 seconds. Uh, so I don't like out. the idea of Northern having Illinois. him bounce it to the outside. I think that's where you want to see Jalen Jackson with that speed be able to bounce it and get north and south. With Evans, I want him getting the ball downhill between the tackles. Thank you. Let's see, you know, what your manhood is about at the first and second level. That's what he is great at. That is where he excels, and that's why I'd like to see him continue to carry the football. I don't think he is as effective running outside of the tackles to the outside trying to bounce it. Well, as mentioned, he began his college career at Iowa. He was a three-star recruit out of Prairie Ridge High School here in Illinois. Picked Iowa over Iowa State, Syracuse, Minnesota, Illinois. But after redshirting in 2018, playing special teams in 2019, he wanted a new start. Wound up having his recruitment coincide with his younger brother Carter who is a reserve linebacker on the Eastern Michigan team although he is out for the season with injury and their older brother actually played here at Northern Illinois a few years ago again a homecoming for the Evans family some 50 friends and family members who made the hour or so drive from Crystal Lake here's Smith on second down eludes the rush gets rid of the football and smartly throws it out of bounds on this play, number 58, Skylar Gill Howard just ran through 
the offensive guard. He just wow. took him and manhandled him to the side. And what you have to do as an offensive lineman, you've got to be able to sit down in your hips and hunker down. You cannot get caught on your heels. You see what happens when a defender's coming forward. Well, the coaches say Gil Howard has a huge upside, a quick twitch kind of guy, and it was on display right there to the chagrin of Zach Conti. That's one of those plays that the offensive line coach will continue to rewind and slow, slow down <laughs> <next week. laughs> to tell you what not to do. <laughs> and on third down, the rush gets to Smith. Devontae O'Malley, the junior defensive tackle from Midlothian, Illinois, coming up with a sack, give him three and a half now on the year. And if you look, both tackles opened up that outside Second shoulder second. at the snap Guard of the out. football. Oh, You've oh, got to oh. kick back Third three steps. Then open that outside shoulder because you give a short corner when you open that shoulder. And it's very difficult sometimes for linemen when they look out towards those defensive ends, especially when you've got a wide pass rusher, because it's natural for your body to open those shoulders. So you almost have to kick back looking straight ahead using your peripheral vision for those defenders. And when you get to that third step, then you open that outside shoulder because you're at the quarterback's level and you can run them past the quarterback. When you open that shoulder like they did right there on the snap of the football, you've given guys a direct line to the quarterback and you saw what happened. Both ends met at the quarterback. So the tackles have to do a better job of sitting down, kicking back, having belief in what their technique is and getting those defenders past that quarterback level. A recruited walk-on former wide receiver, now a difference maker up front defensively for Northern. And now da back deep to return the punt. Dane Partridge, a local from right here in DeKalb, whose family have been season ticket holders for the Huskies since the 1990s. His dad was a Huskies star who had a brief cup of coffee in the NFL. Dane, however, unable to get anything going on that return. Great coverage by Eastern to make sure that Josh McCarty with that sure-handed tackle didn't allow anything more than maybe a yard. And right now for Northern Illinois, I think they need to kind of settle down a little bit. We saw when they, on their first drive going in this direction, they had an opportunity with the vertical pass game, but the wind took the football. It'll be interesting to see on this drive if they try to get vertical again with that pass game. Once again, you've got to be very careful, so you've got to really spin that football because of the wind and throw a direct shot as opposed to putting air under the football because of what we have right now. Northern wind, Illinois instead. continues to play without one of its top receivers injured for the season, Casper Rutkowitz. There's Lampy on the receiving end, big number 49 with a flag behind the play. Barrels forward close to the first down marker. We'll see if it stands. And this is why I love this guy. He falls down <laughs> on the ground and gets right back up. You know, offensive linemen do that. That's what I love about him. He's a football player. I'm going to get back. I'm going to get back in this play. A lot of guys would just lay there or pout or be angry because that was a play for them and they <laughs> slipped. But this guy got up, got the football, and got down the field. You got to love him. Well, he is relentless. He's got a high football IQ. He plays a lot of different positions. For Coach Hammock, fullback, tight end, H back, tailback even. Ineligible downfield, offense number 79. Five yard penalty, first down. Ah, another one of those offensive linemen. Well, on that play, he's going to lead his back down the field, but because Lampy falls down, I think that is what happens. No, he's going to be. Actually, yeah, he's going he up the field. He said 79, Lippy. Yeah, he's on the opposite side of the field. But okay. I think what happens is he's expecting the back to have the ball by that time. So it wouldn't be illegal for him to be down the field blocking. So it's first down and 15. On the jet sweep, Rudolph takes the handoff. Able to pick up seven yards before he's ushered out of bounds. Second down and eight. One thing I've been talking about is Micah Coleman star defensive end for Eastern Michigan. He continues to crash down number 11. On that play, once again, he comes down and you see them able to get around the edge with that jet sweep. I continue to expect to see the quarterback put the ball in the belly, pull it out, and get around the edge with the RPO game. So let's watch for that as this game progresses. Rudolph has two carries for 22 yards. Now back to the air. Lombardi down the left sideline has a man open. It's caught inside the 25-yard line and out of bounds. Chris Carter, the six-foot, seven-inch Howard University transfer with a huge reception. 
But we have a flag down on the other side of the field. That's an interesting catch. Yeah, did he have possession before that left foot went out of bounds? Kempton Shine was all over him. Again, you know, a lack of discipline from the offense right now. You've got a big play. You lose about, what, 40 or 50 yards on that play because you have to be disciplined with this ball club that they were playing disciplined football. They weren't turning the ball over. They had one penalty the last ball game. We've seen two penalties on this drive on plays where they've gotten positive yards on the play before with Lampy getting about seven or eight yards and on that play about a 45 yard pass play, you know, because of discipline. You cannot have a lack of discipline in a ball game like this. Pass a little bit behind Rudolph who couldn't haul it in. That'll bring up third down and 14. And that's when you got to talk to the quarterback, Lombardi. Settle down. Step into your throw. Don't put too much on it. And once again, when you're throwing with this wind, you, as a quarterback, you're trying to gauge how much to put on the football because you want to make sure it gets there. You don't want it to get caught in the wind, but you also have to make sure you put the ball where it needs to be for your receiver to be able to make a play on it. There's number zero for the day, Chase Klein, the Mike linebacker, the hard hat defender for the week. That's why he's got number zero on for the Eagles. Third down, Lombardi swings it out. Rudolph to the 40. Little stop and go inside. And do we have another flag? Indeed we do. As Rudolph was tackled at the 46-yard line. Flag came from the other side of the field. Both these teams looking for their third consecutive win. And as you mentioned, Northern had been clean until now. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense, number zero. Oh. 15 yard penalty, automatic first foul. So Chase Klein, your hard hat defender, now has two personal fouls. And sometimes you can be overly aggressive, and you know, they had a stop. They had a stop on third down. That's exactly what you want your defense to do. Keep everything in front of you. And then Klein, you know, your leader in tackles right now with Sparacio not the in the ball game. Northern Illinois to choose the option of having the clock start on the snap. Sparacio ejected one minute into this game for targeting. They're all conference linebacker along with Klein, both all conference guys. Lombardi has a man. Jalen Johnson, no gain after the uh, catch, thanks to tremendous coverage by Shine. 123 remaining in the half, and a flag. You've got players moving in that bunch formation. Ball start, offense, number nine, five yard penalty. Second That's Davis Patterson, one of the wide receivers. One of the things that makes this offense so versatile is they don't have to change personnel for formation changes. But when you're speeding up the offense like they did on that play, you've got guys moving, you've got a lot of moving parts. And you saw on that play in that bunch formation to the left side of the formation, they weren't set and you had a guy moving prior to the snap of the football. Both teams have been penalized four times so far today for, for 30 yards for NIU now. Lombardi. Rudolph gets to the 35 yard line. And again, the offense has the wind at its back going this way after a six yard pickup to make it third and manageable. And with the way they're lining up at the, when the ball is set, they're looking for a matchup. And when they see that matchup, I think that's when you'll see Lombardi go with that vertical pass. Game. Gavin Williams. And finally the whistle comes as he kept his legs moving. The former Iowa Hawkeye with a big first down run for Northern. 15 yards on the carry. And once again, they're going fast. They're not allowing for Eastern Michigan to make substitutions. NIU has one timeout remaining as the clock stops. 
that this is an opportunity for Eastern Michigan to get more defenders in the ball game. You want to get fresh legs. You want to get a fresh rush up the field. You want to put pressure on this offensive line. Gavin Williams has been productive running the football. Three carries, 30 yards. The redshirt junior from Altoona, Iowa. Empty backfield, five out. And Rocky Lombardi, whose father Tony named his son for Rocky Blyer, former Pittsburgh Steelers great. His pass is caught. Good job to get out of bounds after the reception by Jalen Johnson and stop the clock with 22 seconds to go in the half. And what was interesting, the football player in Johnson wanted to make a play. You saw him go <laughs> to the inside. But then <laughs> the reality of having to come over there and talk to Coach Hammock and the coaching staff, if he didn't get out of bounds, kind of set in, and he got that foot out of bounds to stop the clock. You know, and I mentioned Rocky Lombardi's dad, Tony. He is a football lifer himself. He was actually the uh, a running back at Arizona State and then was an assistant coach at Eastern Michigan and was the interim head coach for one game here at Northern. His son Rocky makes a perfect pass that is dropped by Trayvon Rudolph. And honestly that was probably a good drop. I don't know if he was going to be able to get out of bounds. They would have had to use that last time out. He definitely would not have been able to get to the end zone because they had defenders uh, ready to make the tackle. And so now Cannon Woodle and the field goal unit will come out with the wind at its back to attempt a 35 yard field goal. The punter is also the holder Tom Foley. Isaac Hatfield is the long snapper. And the defense will call a timeout with 17 seconds, seconds to go. My question for you, Chris They're Creighton still going sleeveless on a day that's just getting colder. You think he's going to have a sweatshirt on when he comes out of the locker room for the third quarter? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> the clouds have come in. The sun has disappeared. And if you've ever been here at this facility, as the evening progresses, it gets extremely colder. Now he's a California guy. He grew up in San Francisco, also up in Seattle. He was a quarterback. You wouldn't think he's a tough guy out there, but you know he's climbed Kilimanjaro. He he climbed yeah, but Mount Rainier. Mountain is much different than 40 mile per hour winds <laughs> and, and high 40 degree temperatures when you're standing there climbing. You know you're exerting energy. You're bringing heat to yourself. He's standing here. Woodle, 35 yard boot is good. So a fruitful final drive of this first half for Northern Illinois ties the score at 10 apiece. Well, Woodle is the reigning Mac West special teams player of the week. He was a perfect five for five, including field goals of 31, 37, and 32 yards last week after he took the starting job away from Jake Seibert a couple of weeks ago. And Thomas Hammock seems to have found himself a good one. And I will forever say that kickers matter. People always You're not the only. I mean, I work with other analysts who used to be linemen. They don't say that. I say it. Kickers matter. If it wasn't for Scott Bentley, I would not have a national championship <laughs> ring. So I love my kickers. There you go. You love them if they make the kick, not so much if they miss. I love my kickers that miss. Uh, I might talk about them a little bit, but <laughs> I still got. Them. Well, let me say, I got. I have love for them. Okay. But I love my kicker that makes the kick. Well, Seibert is no longer the place kicker, but he continues to handle the kickoffs. And so number 30 is teed it up. Redshirt sophomore out of LaSalle in Cincinnati. And once again, watch for this return team. We know what they're capable of. Three returns yeah. for touchdowns this season, five since 2020. Uh, so they are very capable, and that's one of the things that his staff talked to us about this week is making sure that they win the special allow this return team to take one back on. Jalen Jackson has one of those three Eastern kick returns for touchdown. That came against Howard. There have only been four kicks returned by all the Mac schools this year for touchdowns, three of them by three different guys for the Eagles. Amziel Zaya has another one. That also came against Howard. Let's see if Jackson can make a play. No, it falls into the end zone. 
And with 14 seconds left going into the wind, I imagine the Eagles will just hold on to the football and head into the locker room. You got to wonder why Jackson didn't try and, you know, get to that football and get a return because it's only 14 seconds going into the wind. So the likelihood of getting a vertical pass down the field before the half is not very high. Um, you know, I think he missed out on an opportunity. If they kick the ball deep, something that I didn't expect them to do. Jackson stays out there as running back behind Austin Smith, the junior quarterback from Ellenwood, Georgia. And indeed, Eastern content to run out the clock. Jackson. And that will do it for the second quarter. Well, just as we thought, a competitive, low-scoring football game. Well, when you look at the weather, the elements, you see what's going on with this ball club, and I think both teams will have to get that running game going to be successful in the second half because the wind is continuing to pick up. Looking forward to it. We'll take a break, come back with our halftime report from DeKalb, Illinois. It's a haunted hockey night in Toronto. Anze Kopitar and the Kings. Austin Matthews and the Maple Leafs. Matthews scores! Kings and Leafs, Halloween night, Tuesday at 8 on ESPN. Private jetting in the night sky. My man hand glide by with my fried rice. Why? What could you not love? By the slice on the side of the hot tub. G R U B H U B. Nothing held back. All for the love of soccer. To know hockey is to love hockey. The NHL on ESPN and ESPN Plus. For the love of football. For the love of La Liga. So racing. Yes, guys. Raiders Lions. Monday at 8 on ESPN and ABC.
is the most selfless teammate I've ever been associated with. They're all in. They go all out. Earn, not given. We talk about it all the time. When a walk-on finds out that their talent and effort are being rewarded with a scholarship. We've never had a walk-on make that wall. The moment is always made more memorable by the reaction from their teammates. We still have him because he's going to put on the But this offseason, on this campus, it was the action of one teammate that made the moment possible. If guys don't have each other's backs, then I really don't think that you truly are a team. Everybody matters. Eastern Michigan offensive lineman Zach Conti has spent the last four years as an Eagles walk-on. But headed into the 2023 season, he was getting first team reps and was the projected starter at left tackle. He doesn't bring attention to himself. He just goes about his work. He's made a massive commitment to be here. Over the years, Zach has come up with different ways to cover his college expenses and keep his football dreams alive. Hey, here we go. I've been working landscaping ever since 2019. It's been like my most consistent income. I also rip out tile for my father and then I rip out carpet as well. And uh, I've also donated plasma before. It was exhausting, but I knew I wanted to play football. So it was all, this is what I got to do to do it. We'd see him come home at night with wheelbarrows or you know mounds of dirt in the back end of his truck. He was gonna walk away and probably like jump in the transfer portal to see if like a smaller division would help him with scholarships. Two-time captain and right tackle Brian Dooley has been on scholarship and a starter for the Eagles since 2019. Zach is not the person to ask for help. I told him I was like, good things are gonna come, just keep working. We're at 85 scholarships, and no matter how many times or how many years I go to the NCAA and say, yeah, but man, I'm just telling you, we need 86. The answer is no. You have 85. Until Brian Dooley comes into my office. Zach, still having a walk on as you're starting left tackle, it just didn't sit well with me. I knew I had to do something for him to help him out. And he said, coach, I am willing to give up my scholarship and to give it to Zach Hunt. Where are you, Dooley? Yeah, see? Let's go! First thing he said to me was, love you, brother. And I said, love you back. It was an unbelievable moment. I mean, it wasn't, you know, a folded piece of paper that said, surprise. I mean, it was, it was a scholarship, so it was awesome. Well, I just wanted to say hello to all you guys. Brian, I appreciate you so much, brother. Uh, that's what it matters. Yeah. Yeah. Some people say, why do it? And it was because I know Zach. I'd do it again for him. He's a brother to me. I just couldn't let him walk away from something that he's built here. It's a great lot. And the previous owner was really into DIY. Okay. Automatic machine. Stair slide. At least we could bundle our home and car insurance with Geico. True. Super slippery. Woo. Is that a chinchilla? Yes. Wait to see this. A Murphy tub. Finding a perfect home is hard. Thankfully, Geico makes it easy to bundle and save. What? Look at all that floor space. Nissan has a car for everyone. Every driver who wants more. More turbo. More freedom. More electric. At Nissan, more is all we do.
Faith's Flowers wasn't living up to its name. But now she's using Amazon Business. With bulk orders that work around her schedule. Plus easy ways to track spend. Which means Faith has the time to make it, well, fantastic. Amazon Business, your partner for smart business buying. There's DNA. Then there's heavy duty DNA. H DNA. It's what every GMC Sierra HD driver is born with, and it's engineered into every aspect of the GMC Sierra HD with the pulling power to prove it. The new 2024 GMC Sierra HD. Tow hitches of the world. Prepare for glory. At L'Oreal Group. We support innovative projects that help restore damaged ecosystems. More than 2 million acres of ecosystems will be restored by 2030. This is how we create the beauty that moves the world. Okay, get this right, and you get my free ticket to tonight's game. Who is my all-time favorite receiver? Oh, oh, Larry, Larry Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald. Yes, Larry Fitzgerald. Larry hey, Fitzgerald. I heard you got an extra ticket to the game tonight. I would love to go. Oh, yeah, sure. It's all, it's all yours, Larry. Thanks, Billy. I'll meet you out front. What? Oh, uh, yeah, okay. It's Bob, but okay. Yeah. He doesn't know your name, dude. I guess I'm Bill now. With Vivid Seats, when you buy 10 tickets, you can get your 11th free. Hit it. Stay two nights and get 5,000 bonus points. Book direct at bestwestern.com. Stadium on the campus of Northern Illinois University. That's the castle that we can see from the football field here. 10 10. A couple of touchdown runs. One for Samson Evans for the Eagles, one for Ontario Brown. For the Huskies, no surprise in either of those. When we come back, Forrest rejoins me. We'll have our first half highlights and stats next. To some folks, college football is a few humdrum hours on a Saturday. To the rest of us, it's sacred. It's a yearly pilgrimage to the hills of Rocky Top. It's having your own safe haven. Deep behind enemy lines. A place to reunite with your actual family of five and your chosen family of 105,000. So go on there, get together, and turn all those away games into home games in a verbo all your own. Football away, baby. Hey, wake up. The words in your head, you're the only one that can hear them. Say it. Yes, I can. Move! Feel it. Hold on to this feeling. Yes, I can. Yes, I must. Watch me. Hi, Phil Swift here for Flex Super Wide Duct Tape. Just check out how wide this is. It's so wide, we built this race boat. Not only can it speed across the water, but our super strong backing can take a pounding. And our powerful adhesive holds the boat together. Now that's what I'm talking about. Woohoo! Get Flex Super Wide Duct Tape. At Bellegarde, outdoor living and hardscape design are all about bringing you moments like these. Create your space. Create your moments with Bellegarde Rooms. How easy is life in the new Buick Encore GX? Piece of cake. I was going to say easy as pie, but that's way better. Backing up with your Buick, it's a walk in the park. Or, you know, a kayak in the park. 
staying connected is a breeze with Wi-Fi and unlimited data. What's the password? You'll be hearing that a lot. Life's easier in the new 2024 Buick Encore GX. This house is a Generac house. And you're just the person to keep it running. Because a proud homeowner has a protective instinct. And frankly, the brains to know the grid is going to let you down sometimes. That's why when the rest of the block is lighting candles and looking for flashlights, you're ready to rock and roll. It's not just a generator. It's Power Move. Request a free quote today. We've been living it since day one. Nothing held back. All for the love of soccer. here at Northern Illinois University. Home team tied with Eastern Michigan, 10 apiece. In a game matching a couple of division rivals, each looking for their third consecutive win. With Forrest Connolly, I'm Doug Sherman. Pretty clean first half. No interceptions, no fumbles. And we didn't see many explosive plays either, just kind of what we thought. A lot of ground game and a lot of tough defense. Well, the weather's kind of dictated what both teams have been able to do. The passing game has not been there at times because of the wind, but the backs have carried the ball effectively between the tackles. Not a lot outside of the tackles on the edge, but between the tackles, that's when both teams have been very successful running the football. And let's give you a taste of that defense as both teams played really well. Well, the player we talked about coming into this game for Eastern Michigan was Michael Coleman, number 11, with his length. And you see, it's been the Michael Coleman show early, making tackles all over the field, maintaining the edge of that defense. On the other side of the football for Northern Illinois, they've gotten pressure in the quarterback's face, been able to jump up and knock balls down. They've been stout at the point of attack, not allowing for a lot of push. And they've done what they needed to do to be successful in keeping their running game from Eastern Michigan contained and not letting it be as explosive as they want it to be. And there is the summary. A couple of first quarter touchdowns, a couple of second quarter field goals. What's to come in the third? We'll have the start of the second half. When we come back, 10-10 our score. A little action here on ESPN+. Plus. Thanks. Whoa. Jake from State Farm, I really need to know. Uh, go spicy or go home, right? What? No. What if I'm not sure I have the right coverage for my car? Oh, your agent can help me make sure it's just what you need. What if I accidentally hit a food truck and it gets covered in empanadas? You can file a claim on the app. At State Farm, we're there for your what-ifs. <sighs> Thanks. Oh. Mm. That is too spicy. That's for you. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or click to get a quote today. Boom, 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 boom. Nissan has a car for everyone. Every driver who wants more. More turbo. More freedom. More electric. At Nissan, more is all we do. There's DNA. Then there's heavy duty DNA. HDNA. It's what every GMC Sierra HD driver is born with, and it's engineered into every aspect of the GMC Sierra HD with the pulling power to prove it. The new. 2024 GMC Sierra HD. Tow hitches of the world. Prepare for glory. The Sonic 2 for 7 deal lets you choose from the Sonic cheeseburger, chicken sandwich, or foot long chili cheese coney. Any two for seven bucks. Because that friend that says they only want one bite never just wants one bite. Sonic 2 for 7 deal. You never know what the weather will bring. Rain-X water repellency wiper blades apply the magic of Rain-X to your windshield so water beads up and flies away. The improved water beading technology lasts longer 
so you see clearly season after season. Let the weather drive you inside? Never. Rain-X. Outsmart the elements. Find Rain-X water repellency wiper blades at these retailers. Just what you want to be You will be in the end And I love you Yes, I love you Oh, I love you Bleu de Chanel At L'Oreal Group, we support innovative projects that help restore damaged ecosystems. More than 2 million acres of ecosystems will be restored by 2030. This is how we create the beauty that moves the world. <laughs> no sweat. and get 5,000 bonus points. Book direct at bestwestern.com. You watch the Mac on ESPN. Young ladies rooting for their Huskies as we head to the third quarter tied at 10 apiece. Eastern Michigan and Northern Illinois. That Husky is warm. In spite of the wind that is relentless at the back of the kicker as we get underway here in the third quarter and easily... Jake Seibert able to boot it into the end zone. Well, passing the football in that first half was not easy for either side. Northern Illinois just 53 yards. That man actually did pretty well. 7 of 13, 101 yards through the air for Austin Smith. On the ground, Samson Evans leads everybody 46 yards and a touchdown. And Ontario Brown, nine carries, only 28 yards in that one touchdown. We'll see if either one of them can really get going. We know Brown can get going more than that. Two weeks ago against Akron, he was unstoppable. But it's Eastern with the football first after deferring to start the football game. Smith made the first man miss and eventually goes down. No chance with the three-time captain, James Esther out of Cass Tech in Detroit. And Smith looked a little bit confused on that play. He went with the ball fake. It looked like he wanted to go down the field with the football, but the defender stepped in the way, and I think that was a good play by Smith, not trying to force it because the defender had a break on that, and there would be nobody in front of him if he was able to get to that football. So I thought that was a good decision by Smith to take the sack on that play. Yeah, Jaden Dolphin, the linebacker, was the first one in the backfield, and then Esther got the sack. Keep it on the ground to Jalen Jackson. At five feet, six inches, he is lightning quick. A Lamar transfer who is said to be the fastest player on this Eastern Michigan offense. And this is a guy that nine of the 19 games that he has played for Eastern Michigan, he's had over 100 all-purpose yards. So he has the ability. They just need to get him the ball in space and allow him to operate. And again, he is a game-breaking kick returner as well to pick up a lot of those yards. An 89-yard touchdown return against Buffalo last year. Another one this year, week one, against Howard University. He picked up four yards, so it's third down and six. Empty backfield for Austin Smith. Looking right, throwing right, has a man. It's number one, Hamzi El Zayat. The former Fordham Ram picks up a first down for EMU after a 12 yard game. And a good job by El Zayat to know where the sticks are and get beyond the sticks to get the first down. Yeah, the game-winning 50-yard touchdown reception from Austin Smith late against Massachusetts a few weeks ago. Samson Evans into the game for the first time here in the third quarter. And the first half leading rusher falls forward for a gain of at least eight yards. And again, you make contact at the line of scrimmage. Unless you wrap him up, he's going to keep going. And you're seeing push at the point of attack by the offensive line for Eastern Michigan once again. 
El Zion spins, but uh, was not fooling the defensive back, Jay Sean Prophet, junior safety from Pompano Beach, Florida, with a secure tackle after a three yard game. But El Zion, once again, knows where the sticks are and is able to help his team move the chains. And now play is stopped with 12 20 remaining in the third quarter. Perhaps the ball blew off of its mark again. We've seen that a couple of times. This wind is relentless. And once again, as the day continues to progress, the sun has disappeared. The clouds have taken over, so it's getting colder as well. Evans lowers his shoulder. Gain of three. Yeah, the big question going into the halftime locker room is would Eastern Michigan head coach Chris Creighton come back out in short sleeves for the second half. You said there's no way he's not coming out with a long sleeve sweater or sweatshirt for the third quarter. We'll have to see what the head coach decided. There you go. Sleeves on those arms. Smart man. <laughs> Hansen came from his safety position, flagged down on an incomplete pass intended for Tanner Canoe. And I think they're going to get a late hit on the safety coming across on a defenseless player. Jordan Hansen came on a safety blitz, and that left. Nate Bell Carcel, who you see there, back in coverage. He's been a real big playmaker for this defense. Once again, they're trying to protect the offensive player. And the officials are discussing this right now. There are two fouls on the play, both against the defense. Pass interference, defense. Personal foul, targeting. Defense. There you go from our referee, Rich Edwards. And you saw the officials discussing that. First, you're going to see the holding down at the bottom of the screen. So that's your pass interference right there. He's continuing to hold on to the. The player in question is number nine for targeting. Yeah. So Javon Bird was the one called for holding, and Nate. Bell Carcel, number nine, with the targeting call. And he hit him above the shoulders. I don't think that's going to be targeting when you look at it. It looked like he got more of the shoulder pad and the helmet popped back. We can see a little better with this angle. Unless I the guess goalpost gets in the way. I think it's more of a late hit than a targeting penalty because the play is over right now. There's no reason for him to make contact with the offensive player. Well, no, I think that's going to be targeting because he hit him in his neck, so that's above the shoulder pads with the forearm. And once again, it's a play that he did not have to make because the play was over at that point. You knew he was not going to be able to make the reception, but because he hit him above the shoulders in the neck area, I am assuming this is going to be deemed a targeting penalty well, because he was defenseless as well. Yeah. We had a targeting to start the ball game that eliminated Joe Sparacio, the all-conference linebacker for Eastern Michigan. And we may be on the verge of losing a tremendous safety, Nate Belcarcel. But the question for also, Northern. question also is, he's coming in with his forearm and the receiver's falling down. So that as well kind of plays into it. I think that's why we've got the officials, replay officials kind of looking at this again because when the, the player's falling down, you're not necessarily, you know, going for that area, but you kind of fall into it as an offensive player. But I think the defenseless part is what sticks out. Now, Carcel was a South Dakota Coyote as we get the After call. After review, the ruling of targeting on the field is confirmed. Number nine has been disqualified for the record. Both penalties will be enforced. The pass interference was a spot foul, followed by a dead ball targeting foul. 15 yards, automatic first down. I think what makes it targeting is it's a play that didn't necessarily have to happen. 
Uh, I think if he was uh, still had an opportunity to possess the football, they may not have called targeting because he was going down as the defender hit him. But it's a play that the defender did not have to make contact with him at all because the play was basically over at that point. And so a huge sequence. And let's see if Eastern Michigan can take advantage. They've got the football at the northern 25 yard line. Jackson takes the sweep. Gets inside the 20 yard line after a six yard gain. And that is where I think Jackson's most effective getting him out of the space and allowing him to use that speed and that quickness and quick twitch as opposed to Samson Evans going out on the edge. I like Evans between the tackles. Jackson's out of Centennial High School Burleson Texas has one touchdown so far this year that came against UMass in Ypsilanti. On second and four, give it back to the five foot six inch tailback, and he shoots through the hole for a first down. Five more yards for number 28 in white. And that right side of the offensive line, once again, Howie and Dooley are doing an excellent job of firing off the football. And the thing that they're doing that's being, that's helping that running game be so successful, they're keeping their feet moving. They're just not melting on contact. A lot of times, offensive linemen make contact. And it becomes a stalemate. But what those guys are doing, they're rolling their hips up and they're getting movement at the point of attack, allowing for their, those backs to have seams to get up the field. You saw Dooley, the sixth year Eagle at right tackle. Alex Howie, the right guard, a grad student from Canton, Michigan. Samson Evans trying to get around the corner. He is stopped at the 10 yard line. This is quite a one two punch running back, as good as any combo. In the Mac, Evans gets the majority of the claim because of all the touchdowns, but the reality is Jalen Jackson was first team all conference last year. Well, it's kind of like Thunder and Lightning. You've got Thunder with Evans, you know, the power back that wants to run over people in between the tackles. And you've got Lightning and Jackson, who's cat quick, can get to the outside and bounce it in the speed to get to the end zone. And Evans stays in after gaining four yards on first down. He is the game's leading rusher. He stays in to pass block. Pass goes into the end zone, and it is incomplete. Nicely done on defense to break that up by Profit. Trying to find Blake Daniels, who had a big height advantage, but Profit was not going to give up. And Profit did a good job of not panicking. He watched the receiver and waited for him to put his hands up. Now, when you look at Daniels, he's got a height advantage of about six inches. So Profit did what he needed to do, waited for the ball to get there, and was able to get his hands up and knock it down. Austin Smith needs to put a little bit more air on the football. I thought he waited a tad bit too late to throw that football, but you want to put air under it and allow your big tight end to high point that football. EMU six of nine on third down today. Here comes the blitz. Smith takes a hit, puts it up. It's caught. Touchdown, Eastern Michigan. Hamzi El Zayat, although we have three flags back in the backfield. They went low on the quarterback. I think there's going to be a penalty against the defense for hitting the quarterback below the knees. Uh, but a good job by Smith staying in there when that pressure's coming in his face and delivering the ball where El Zayat can make a play on it. There is no foul for roughing the passer. The player was blocked into him. We have personal foul. Tripping offense number 68 15 yard penalty third down. That's Alex Howie the right guard. A huge mistake to take six points off the board. And what happens once again you know quarterbacks you have to recognize that blitz and you have to hold that snap count and allow your offensive lineman to identify the Mike linebacker and identify your blocking assignments. Often offensive linemen, when they're facing a blitz like that and you get a tripping call, it's because they are out of place and they see someone coming free. And you see right there, he tries to slightly stick his leg out and trip the free rusher coming directly in the middle of the offensive line to make a hit on the quarterback. The line to gain is the four yard line on third and a mile. Smith has a man, El Zayat, 
Not going to get away from the clutches of the defender. Tackled at the 19-yard line by Jay Sean Prophet. Only a six-yard gain, and so with the wind blowing into their face, the field goal unit will come out. Well, I think that play was more so to get in better field goal range, get the ball to the left hash, probably where the kicker wants the football, uh, where it's more favorable for him to try and make this kick. Gomez one for one on field goals here today. This from 37 yards, and the southpaw puts his foot into it. And you can see that wind just taking it from left to right, but it did go through the uprights. And Eastern Michigan retakes the lead on the field goal by Jesus Gomez, the junior from Puebla, Mexico. Hey, Jake, we're gonna stay apart. You know, it's really scary. Popcorn with no butter. No, hitting insurance. I mean, what if the jargon makes me feel alone and in the dark? Hey, at State Farm, we're there for your what ifs. <laughs> Sorry. Is that seat taken? Get on up here, buddy. Let's go. Let's go. Most water? Yeah, for my cup of ale. I saw. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or click to get a quote today. Boom, 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 boom. Nissan has a car for everyone. Every driver who wants more. More turbo. More freedom. More electric. At Nissan, more is all we do. There's DNA. Then there's heavy duty DNA. HDNA. It's what every GMC Sierra HD driver is born with, and it's engineered into every aspect of the GMC Sierra HD with the pulling power to prove it. The new 2024 GMC Sierra HD. Toe hitches of the world. Prepare for glory. Tourists. Tourists that turn into scientists. Tourists photographing thousands of miles of remote coral reefs that can be analyzed by AI in real time. So researchers can identify which areas are at risk and help life underwater flourish. Back in DeKalb, Illinois, with Eastern Michigan retaking the lead. We really can't overstate the job Chris Creighton has done in his decade in Ypsilanti. You know, he took over a football program that was moribund. I mean, it was historically bad at a commuter school where there was a lot of talk about potentially either disbanding the football program or dropping it down to Division II or a lower level. And he came into a position where a lot of people wouldn't have gone, and not only has he survived a decade, they went 9-3 and three last fall. Second highest win total in program history. Won their bowl game for the first time since 1987. And here he has them once again. A win today would make them 3-1 and one in league play and in the mix for a league championship. Well, unlike after halftime coming out with the sleeves, he accepted the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he is a... Uh, 54 year old from San Francisco still a huge Las Vegas Raiders fan. He was an Oakland Raiders fan as a kid. Kenny Stabler was his guy John Matuzak Arthur Whittington and then actually when his guy Max Crosby got drafted by the Raiders he said I flatline <laughs> and when you talk to him you see him in his office he's got a Raiders helmet right behind his desk. Well, he's great to talk to him. I mean a uh, great conversation. Um, I'm still not climbing that mountain. Uh, <laughs> in spite care. of in his, spite uh, of all the greatness. Gotcha. <laughs> there are three fouls on the play, all by the kicking team. Offside, kicking team. Number 81. Personal foul, blocked below the waist. Number seven. Sideline warning, Eastern Michigan. That's their first warning of the game. The deal, defensive offsides will be declined. Will enforce the block below the waist. First down, Northern Illinois. The London Craft, the block below the waist, and uh, I want to know who the get-back coach is. 
He didn't do his job there, making sure people stay on the sideline where they're supposed to. And for people that don't understand what that is, that's the coach that's out there screaming, get back, get back. <laughs> <laughs> Get off the field. <laughs> well, after a fairly clean first half, the uh, penalties to begin this third quarter have been the story. Eastern Michigan shoots itself in the foot again. It should have had a touchdown or could have had a touchdown. Had a six point score taken off the board because of a penalty. Now confusion in the backfield. Lombardi just cuts his losses and goes down with a two yard loss. Well, they ran some misdirection on that play, but they got the hand, handoff bobbled. A good job from Lombardi just to hold on to the football. You got the action coming back, and you want to turn around and hand it off to Brown. So you want to have the defense looking and get their eyes caught up in the eye candy. But once again, when you've got all that movement and all those moving parts, you have situations like that. So a good job by Lombardi just to squeeze and hold on to the football. He is 25 years old. Has as much experience playing college quarterback as anybody in the country. Makes a smart, safe throw on time and on target. And then Rudolph is pushed back. Rocky Lombardi's great grandfather, Walter Haas, was captain in the star halfback at Minnesota back in the 1930s. His grandfather, Bob Lombardi, was a high school coaching legend in the state of Illinois. As we mentioned before, Rocky's dad, Tony, grew up in the suburbs of Chicago, went on to be a very good running back at Arizona State in the early 80s, and named his son Rocky after Vietnam veteran and former Steelers running back Rocky Blyer. Great name, great football family. Third down and five. Lombardi steps up, fires a bullet, and it's caught at the 30-yard line. Nicely done to move the chains for the Huskies. A 10 yard pickup. Grayson Barnes standing tall at 6 5. And a good job by Lombardi spotting his tight end in the middle of the field. The tight end did a good job of sitting down, excuse me, the wide receiver Grayson Barnes of sitting down and making himself a big target. That's what you want your receivers to do find holes in that zone defense and make yourself a target for your quarterback, especially in windy conditions like this. You want to make sure that you give your quarterback a solid target to throw the football to. On first down, play action. Lombardi, after a hesitation, unloads it incomplete, trying to find Grayson Barnes for a second consecutive play. A good job by Ontario Brown trying to get in front of Chase Klein, the big linebacker coming in on the blitz, giving Lombardi just a bit more time to try and get that ball down the field. Once again, what I want to see these quarterbacks do is a better job of recognizing that blitz because the defense, they're showing that blitz. Hold the snap count. The line has to be disciplined, but you've got to hold that snap count because on the back end, that helps offensive linemen decipher what their blocking assignments are. Here's Brown. Upended and a flag on the play. I think you're going to get holding. Holding. Offense. Number 79. 10 yard penalty. Second down. That is the left guard from Milwaukee, J.J. Lippy, out of Whitefish Bay. High school called for the hold, and that'll push the Huskies back to the 40 yard line. And if you look on the left side of your screen, often when interior linemen get caught for holding, you see he took an outside step, and the defensive tackle took an inside move. You've got to be able to power step when that happens, and you just want to drive block those guys, take them where they're going, allow your back to try and cut off of that block. When you've got dynamic backs, they can make a play off of that. On second and 20, Lombardi may have had his arm hit as he reared back to throw, and then the wind took that ball flying away from the intended receiver, Jalen Johnson. And now this is what Eastern Michigan wants. You want third and long, obvious passing down, and you want to release your pass rushers. But he got a piece of Lombardi's arm right there, and you see the ball kind of flutter out right there. But a good job by Justin Jefferson. 
get him around the edge. And once again, at 5'11", 228, he's very difficult to block because he's not that tall. And for the taller offensive linemen, those guys can get under you. Northern has converted four times in nine tries on third down today. This is third and 20. Lombardi, little tall for the intended receiver. That's hard to do. Chris Carter is six foot seven. That'll bring up fourth down in 20. Interesting play call because I thought this was four down territory where you just try and get a little bit, not all of it at one time. Fourth and 20, maybe get seven to eight yards, make it, you know, excuse me, third and 20, maybe get seven to eight yards and then make it fourth and 10 or 12. And they give the appearance of going for it on fourth and 20. And I would think with the wind at their back, you could have even considered trying to kick a field goal here, but they will try to get, well, it is a pooch punt. I just learned something as the ball reaches the end zone. Lombardi's a left footed kicker. How about that? We'll take a break. Eastern gets the football back on top by three. We love our house. It's on a great block, tree lined streets. The neighbors are observant. And we're back at the Sullivan House. It's lawn day, Sheila, and the leaves are piling up. At least Geico makes bundling our home and car insurance easy. Mm, nothing but air. I hate to see that. Geico. Bundling made easy. Boom, boom, boom. Nissan has a car for everyone. Every driver who wants more. More turbo. More freedom. More electric. At Nissan, more is all we do. Then there's heavy duty DNA, HDNA. It's engineered into every aspect of the GMC Sierra HD with the pulling power to prove it. Tow hitches of the world prepare for glory. How easy is life in the new Buick Encore GX? Piece of cake. I was gonna say easy as pie, but that's way better. Backing up with your Buick, it's a walk in the park, or you know, a kayak in the park. Staying connected is a breeze with Wi-Fi and unlimited data. What's the password? You'll be hearing that a lot. Life's easier in the new 2024 Buick Encore GX. I don't think it's any one thing that's memorable. The whole experience is memorable. You've been somewhere else, that's fine. Go Disney, you're not gonna go back. It's just as simple as that. Hey, deal lovers, in. here's something new. Having good taste shouldn't cost you a good deal. And in this hut, $7 gets you both. The all-new $7 deal lovers menu at Pizza Hut. Because it's only a deal if you love it. I'm coming in hot. Eastern Michigan 13, Northern Illinois 10. On a busy day around the Mid-American Conference. Couple of final scores, Ohio at home. A tough game from Western Michigan, but the Bobcats survived 20 to 17. Bowling Green, no trouble with Akron at home, 41-14. And a couple of games of real interest in the division for these two teams, Toledo and Central Michigan, the teams that they are competing with for the top of the division. The Chippewas trail Ball State 17-10 in the third quarter. Then the big game over on ESPNU, the Rockets with a big lead, 21-3 over Miami. Those are the two hottest teams in the league, both riding long winning streaks, and that's a bit of a surprise that it's not closer than that. But Toledo trying to improve to 4-0 in conference play. Miami also undefeated in league play. Atop the East Division coming into the week. No gain on first down. Tyler Jackson Clark, the uh, redshirt senior from A Leaf, Texas. In his third start in college. Played 10 games as a true freshman in 2018 at Incarnate Word, then the last four years at Lamar. Smith fakes the handoff. Now finds on a crossing route a receiver who was wide open. That's Hamzi El Zaya. And a good job by Smith being patient and allowing El Zayat to clear the defenders before he delivered the football, which allowed him to get the reception, plant, and get north and south to get positive yards. 
A big third down, third and three, as the former Fordham Ram, number one in white, looks to do more damage. He's a Dearborn, Michigan kid who, after his years at Fordham, got his degree, transferred back to the state of Michigan. He goes in motion. Smith trying to dump it off, and it's incomplete. Off the hands of the intended receiver, tight end Jerry Getzinger, who is more of a blocking tight end. Don't see him very often targeted. And he's unable to make the catch. That brings up fourth down, and the punt team will come out. And a good idea. I thought Smith should have did that play fake, held that play fake a, a tad bit longer to keep the linebacker's eyes on him. I think he pulled that ball a bit early on that play fake, allowing the linebacker to see it and react and get to the outside. Thomas Eck from his own 15 yard line. Partridge lets it bounce and it'll come to a stop at the 34 yard line. That's where the Huskies will have the football when we come back. Late in the third quarter, Eagles up three. How easy is life in the new Buick Encore GX? Piece of cake. I was gonna say easy as pie, but that's way better. Backing up, with your Buick, it's a walk in the park. Or, you know, a kayak in the park. <laughs> Staying connected is a breeze. With Wi-Fi and unlimited data. What's the password? You'll be hearing that a lot. Life's easier in the new 2024 Buick Encore GX. On three, you can open your eyes and tell us where you think you're going. One, two, three. three. We're going to Disney World. We are about to start packing. Oh I'm going to wait, 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 wait. Disney World. Disney World. Disney World. Disney World. What will you try on your first visit? ESPN Plus gets you ready for the NFL all season long. Get highlights every week with NFL Primetime. And live games return week 11 with a Super Bowl rematch. Stream the NFL all season long with ESPN Plus. you not love by the slice on the side of the hot tub g r u b h u b everyone is ready for monday night football Devonte adams is ready to lead the silver and black into the lion's den jared goff and the pride are on the hunt to take control of the nfc north raiders lions monday at eight on espn and abc raiders lions monday at eight on espn and abc ESPN Plus is the home for more than 40 MAC football games and plenty of women's soccer matches, including these tomorrow. Akron hosting Miami and Toledo hosts Kent State, both at 1 Eastern. And next Saturday, the featured college football game is a Michigan MAC trophy matchup. Western takes on Eastern at 1 Eastern time. If you're a MAC fan, go to ESPNPlus.com to sign up. And you're watching us now on ESPN Plus. We appreciate it. Forrest Connolly, Doug Sherman, our entire crew from DeKalb, Illinois. And the Huskies with a football back. Nicely designed, nicely executed. Rocky Lombardi to Trayvon Rudolph. And Lombardi, if he looks down the field, he's got Chris Carter streaking wide open. Nobody went with him. Good job by Lombardi finding the open receiver, but he needs to scan the field because they had a busted coverage on that play, and number 11 was streaking down the sideline. Nobody ran with him. As it is, a first down pickup from Lombardi to Rudolph. 
Well, again is the number one receiver with the injury to Casper Rutkowitz who is out for the season. Receiver screen is caught. It's a first down and then some. Dane Partridge out of Marmion Academy right here in DeKalb with his first reception and it goes for 13 yards. And right now it's almost like you see Northern Illinois realizing, okay, we've got just a couple of more minutes with the wind at our back. We've got to take advantage of it and pass this football and get that passing game going. Well, Rocky Lombardi certainly can throw the football. He broke the max single game passing record at Kent State a couple of years ago. 532 yards against the Golden Flashes that day. Rudolph after his stutter step tries to get to the edge. Nothing doing. Tremendous pursuit defensively to make sure he couldn't get there. And string that play out. That's Joey Zelinsky, the Hudson Valley Community College transfer. That's in Troy, New York, who wound up keeping up with a very speedy ball carry. And how impressive is that? Six foot three, 250 pounds, to be able to have the lateral movement to keep up with him and not allow him to get to the edge. Great play on the outside by the defensive end, Joey Zelinsky. John uh, Joseph John Zelinsky the third forcing a three yard loss on the play. Take the handoff Lombardi. Trying to find Johnson who had been in motion. What is it about the Northern Illinois offense where they throw so many different looks at you. Why is that hard for a defense at least at times. Because you think you know what you're looking at. And it's totally different than what you expect it to be. One of the things that Coach Hammond talked about is, you know, breaking tendencies. And when the defense looks at film of what they do out of certain formations, doing something totally different out of that formation. So it's a game of cat and mouse with this offense. Johnson, Patterson, and Pardridge, the receivers to the top of your screen. The running back is Gavin Williams on third down and long. Whistles before the Delaying snap. Game. Offense, number 12. Five yard penalty, third down. And it all goes back to that play by Please George Zelensky. Please reset the game clock to 146. Get big stop, not allowing the receiver to get to the edge to get north and south, putting them behind the sticks, which made them try to get vertical on second down. Now you've got a delay of game, so you go from first and 10 now to third and 18. And they're in a similar spot to their last drive third and long from just about this part of the football field with the wind at their back a minute 46 remaining in the quarter. Do you make this four down territory and look not to get a first down just get some yardage back. Well when you can get the first down on a wonderful hands catch. Why not do it. Davis Patterson the James Madison transfer with a marvelous adjustment to the football and Davis Patterson was open for a while but Lombardi had to get away from the pressure and he delivered the ball and a good job by Patterson contorting his body to turn around and be able to squeeze that football 21 yards on the pass play play still alive and it's Gavin Williams making something out of nothing. That's a nine yard carry for the redshirt junior from Altoona Iowa and that's what's so difficult about this offense because you've got Ontario Brown and you know what he's capable of so you come in with a game plan to slow him down but then a guy like Gavin Williams gets going with his ability his stop and go ability and his breaking tackle ability. Well he played 26 games over three years with the Iowa Hawkeyes carried the football 116 times. That's the course in Big Ten competition. He's a really good back as well as Brown Lombardi passing to Brown and he is swallowed up by a sea of white jerseys. The man who was in coverage was London Kraft to make sure that the elusive number one couldn't get away. And I think that's where Northern Illinois gets into trouble with the East West passing game. You've got to get north and south of that passing game. The defenders for Eastern Michigan do a really good job with lateral movement and playing laterally defensively and with their pursuit. So I think you need to look at passing the ball north and south as opposed to east and west. 
Well, with third down and three, the job is going to get a little bit tougher for Northern this Illinois as the quarter the ends. Of the third quarter. They will head to the other end of the football field, and they will try to complete the drive into the wind. On a windy day in DeKalb, a competitive football game should be a tremendous finish back with the fourth quarter after this. How easy is life in the new Buick Encore GX? Piece of cake. I was gonna say easy as pie, but that's way better. Backing up? With your Buick, it's a walk in the park. Or, you know, a kayak in the park. <laughs> Staying connected is a breeze. With Wi-Fi and unlimited data. What's the password? You'll be hearing that a lot. Life's easier in the new 2024 Buick Encore GX. This house is a Generac house, and you're just the person to keep it running. Because a proud homeowner has a protective instinct. And frankly, the brains to know the grid is going to let you down sometimes. That's why when the rest of the block is lighting candles and looking for flashlights, you're ready to rock and roll. It's not just a generator. It's a power move. Request a free quote today. Big corporation? Not quite. 96% of the farms in Illinois are actually owned and operated by families. Illinois Family Farmers. We are the 96%. Knowing how filthy Sid's wrister is means knowing why goalies lose 10 pounds of sweat every game. Knowing it's overtime against Connor McDavid. Is knowing the game's as good as over. Knowing the taste of victory is knowing it tastes best out of one particular cup. Knowing where the season's biggest events can be seen means knowing you'll never miss one. Maple Leafs Bruins, Thursday, 7.30 on ESPN+. Lowe's knows Black Friday savings should be more than just one day. That's why we're giving you Black Friday deals every day, where you can find the best value all November long. Buy now, pay later with Lowe's Pay. We've been living it since day one. On the pitch. And in the streets. Good shoot and score! Glorious. Beautiful. True. Would you believe it? The thrill of every win. The devastation of every loss. Nothing held back. All for the love of soccer. Uh, Northern Illinois University on a brisk October evening trying to come from behind as we head to the fourth quarter. They've got the football deep in eastern Michigan territory as we start the fourth quarter. Now into the wind and third down for Rocky Lombardi and the Huskies. Alongside Forrest Connolly, I'm Doug Sherman. And the first play of the fourth quarter. Don't know if there was miscommunication or just a badly thrown football, but there was no chance for the receiver intended, Trayvon Rudolph, to make a play on the football. What's interesting about this play is, is this the hash that's more favorable for their kicker? Because you have to think about that as well. When you're down this end of the field going against the wind, you want to make sure that you have the ball on the correct hash for your kicker or the more comfortable hash. It's a field goal from 39 yards into the wind is long on the year is 49 plenty of distance and it is good. Well this young man who is a member of NIU's ROTC program has been quite the revelation a redshirt sophomore from Plainfield Illinois ties the ball game with a challenging kick.
you see everyone kind of breathing a sigh of relief because that was not a good snap. The holder did a good job of getting the ball and getting it where the kicker could make the kick, but every play counts at this point right now. Now it'll be interesting to see what kind of offensive philosophy Eastern Michigan comes out with in this fourth quarter now that they will be going. Will we see a heavy dose of Samson Evans and Jalen Jackson, or will they try to get Austin Smith uh, passing the football? And I think with Austin Smith, I think you, if you want to pass the football, sprint him outside the pocket. Give him more space to operate. Keep in mind, EMU has a record three kickoff returns for touchdown. At the Kendrick Nowlings stunner versus Kent State to open the game last year, number one in the country. And so the kick comes to one of the up men, El Zayat, who has one of those three touchdown returns. He is able to bring the football out across the 30 yard line. It's a good starting position for the Eagles offense, trying to retake the lead. Those numbers are starting to pop. You know, we talk about the uh, silver numbers on the white uniform in the uh, sunlight. Can't see them as well, but now that the uh, evening is settling in and the stadium lights, those. Uh, Kind of seem reflective. So number four in white, Austin Smith, out there with Samson Evans. Evans has scored five touchdowns in his last four games, including one here today. Evans on first down, picks his way across the 35. Again on first down, give the football to the big man, and you get six yards most every time. And now this allows you to be a diversified offense, and you can either pass the ball or run the ball. Because of the amount of yards that he got on first down. So you keep the defense on their heels and keep them guessing. The middle of Nancy and Matthew Evans, three boys, does not get the handoff. Instead, Smith keeps. And he's got himself a first down. Give him five yards on the carry. One of the, uh, the themes for Eastern Michigan for us this year is that they need for Austin Smith, their quarterback, to be consistent with everything. How do you feel he has been today through three quarters in that regard? I think he's done a pretty good job uh, with being consistent. I think the thing that he needs to continue to work on is being a little bit more patient, but also I think the offensive line needs to work on giving him the time that he needs. The guards in the center have to be stout at the point of attack and not allow pressure to come in his face, and the tackles need to work on keeping that width of the pocket. But I think he's done a pretty good job. Handles the uh, snap. He's had three different centers this year. That's been a part of the issue as well. Getzinger made the catch, but then went down. Carson Lee, the Colorado transfer, started again today. He's the third starting center after Dimitri Douglas and Broderick Roman. So that could be part of the issue. How do you find consistency as a quarterback if you're constantly breaking in a new center? Yeah, but what I'm talking about, you look at that play right there to get to you. You've got to put the ball away. He can catch it and make a play. He's leaning out and he falls and loses his footing because of where the ball's delivered. He didn't have pressure. Just drop the ball off to him. Those are the little intangibles I think he needs to continue to work on. Mm -hmm. But it does make a difference when you've got a different center because that's one of the most important parts of the offensive game plan is the center quarterback exchange. And when you don't have consistency at that position, it takes away from your level of comfort as a quarterback. As you mentioned, uh, number 75, Carson Lee, the former Colorado Buffalo, took over in this position early against Kent State. Out of Cherry Creek High School in Greenwood Village. Roderick Roman missed the Kent State game. He's getting healthier. And Dimitri Douglas was their starting center to begin the year. Transfer from Michigan State. Play clock down to five on third down and nine. Smith over the middle. And it is intercepted. Pass was a bit behind the intended receiver and Cyrus McGarrell with his second interception of the year. And you saw the effects of the wind carry that football. He had time and you see the ball is slightly behind the receiver. It bounces off his shoulder pads right into the defender's hands. McGarrell did a good job of concentrating on that football and squeezing it and bringing it to his body. But that's the dangers when you're throwing with the wind as hard as this wind is blowing. The ball can carry at times. So you have to try and lead your receiver because 
the ball is not going to go where you think it is. You have to throw it where you think it will end up, not where you want it to be because of the wind. Fourth interception of the year thrown by Smith, and now Ontario Brown, who has looked to get it going, has his biggest run of the day. Well, I'll ask you this, with a flag down, see if this play stands, I can't help but wonder why two weeks ago, Ontario Brown is able to run for 280 yards, but then last week against Ohio held to 34 yards, and until that run, we hadn't seen much of him in the there 30s are two as well. On the play, both against the offense. Holding, offense, number 40. That penalty is declined. Correction, holding, offense number 85. That penalty is declined. The hold on number 40 will be enforced, 10 yards from the previous spot, first down. So Izzy Ozo will be the one whose penalty is held. But I get back to, is it play calling? Is it something the defense is doing so you can't go to Ontario Brown like you did two weeks ago? Or is it just that the Akron defense was so incapable of stopping him, that's why he had such a big game? Well, one of the things that Coach Hammond talked about with Ontario Brown is he's been frustrated because he has not had the type of production that he thought he would this season. And it's about consistency. And I think one of the things that he has to understand is defenses are concentrating and game planning for him. So you have to find creative ways to get him to football. I don't think just handing the football off to him, you know, 10 or 15 times a game out of the backfield is going to get it done because of the game planning that takes place to stop him. So you have to find creative ways to get him the ball on the outside and allow him timeout to be a special player on the offense. Media and timeout. Chase Klein, Tim Grant, Randall, Alex Merritt all over him as Brown requires some medical assistance. Boom, 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 boom. Nissan has a car for everyone. Every driver who wants more. More turbo. More freedom. More electric. At Nissan, more is all we do. Okay, get this right, and you get my free ticket to tonight's game. Right. Who is my all-time favorite receiver? Oh, oh, Larry, Larry Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald. Yes, Larry Fitzgerald. Larry hey, Fitzgerald. I heard you got an extra ticket to the game tonight. I would love to go. Oh, yeah, sure. It's all, it's all yours, Larry. Thanks, Billy. I'll meet you out front. What? Uh, yeah, okay. It's Bob, but okay. Yeah. He doesn't even know your name, dude. I guess I'm Bill now. With Vivid Seats, when you buy 10 tickets, you can get your 11th free. At L'Oreal Group, we support innovative projects that help restore damaged ecosystems. More than 2 million acres of ecosystems will be restored by 2030. This is how we create the beauty that moves the world. Well, the Max third leading rusher, Ontario Brown, who we were just talking about, averaging 93 yards per game, but has been held in check the last couple of weeks. Just walked off the field under his own power with a slight limp, but you said you noticed something, a little hitch in his giddy up to play before. Yes, it looked like he tweaked that ankle on that long rest that got called back because of the holding penalty. So I was surprised that they gave him the ball once again, and he probably tweaked it again, so I hope he's going to be okay. So Brown is on the sideline for this second and 22. Gavin Williams out of Dowling Catholic High School in Iowa is the running back. And the slot receiver, the tight end, Chris Carter, jumped. And that'll push him back Full some more. Start. Offense, number 11. Five yard penalty. Second down. And he just ran on off the field. 
I don't think I've ever seen that. In all of my years of college football, you know, a guy jump off sides and just go ahead and keep on running and going yep, off the field. I'm good. I know what's coming. <laughs> Well, if you jump earlier and you're an interior lineman, maybe you can hide. But when you do it right there, yeah, I'm just going to head to the sideline. Yeah. <laughs> it just takes a light jog. Yeah, go ahead I'm and good. going off the field. Coach, like, hey. you don't have to remove me. I'll remove myself. <laughs> Lombardi gets hit, keeps the play alive, checks it down, finds Williams out of the backfield. And he is tackled at the 27 yard line. That's a nine yard gain. And all the defense wants to do is keep them behind the sticks, keep everything in front of them. And make the tackle. One of the things that makes this drive very difficult for Northern Illinois is they're going against the wind. So you also have to look at field position at this point. A secure tackle by Elijah Williams, one of the backup linebackers getting more reps today with the disqualification of Joe Sparacio for targeting a minute into the ball game. Lombardi on a designed run. We've got a flag down. As Lombardi just slides to a stop at the 28. Holding. Offense. Number 50. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. That's the center from Indianapolis, Pete Nigra. And that'll bring the punt team for Northern Illinois onto the field. There's Tom Foley, number 98, 6'4, who was a Minnesota Golden Gopher in 2019. He didn't appear in a game as a redshirt and then transferred to Northern Illinois. Low punt takes a northern bounce, finally grabbed at the 28 yard line just to make sure that the punt didn't keep going. Nicely done. Good hands by El Zayat, and that is where the Eagles will take over here in the fourth. You know, it's really scary. Popcorn with no butter. No, getting insurance. I mean, what if the jargon makes me feel alone and in the dark? Hey, at State Farm, we're there for your what ifs. <laughs> Sorry. Is that seat taken? Get on up here, buddy. Let's go. Let's go. Most wanted? Yeah, for my cup of ale. I saw. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or click to get a quote today. Boom, 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 boom. Nissan has a car for everyone. Every driver who wants more. More turbo. More freedom. More electric. At Nissan, more is all we do. Wow. Can luxury connoisseurs tell the difference between an expensive mascara and Lash Paradise? Are you ready to put your makeup expertise to the test? This one is the more expensive one. <laughs> that one is Lash Paradise. I am sold. It's confirmed. You don't have to pay for Lux results. When disaster strikes, what really matters? It's not walls, pipes, or sheetrock. It's not rugs or furniture. What matters most is getting you back on your feet. And you deserve a company that knows what matters. Belfour, restoring more than property. with a pseudo meteorologist again today. Forrest Connolly loves keeping track of the weather. Our guys, that guy is standing facing a brisk wind that has had the flags stiff for the entire time we've been out here today. Camera's shaking. Although we did just see one guy, 55 degrees currently, wind chill 49, which I'm not buying. No. I would say 30. <laughs> we just saw a guy walking in gym shorts and a t-shirt leisurely through the stands, which I'll never figure out. And you know, cold weather is big man weather, but this is a bit extreme <laughs> with the wind. It's not the cold, it's the wind. <laughs> well, we appreciate all of our tremendous 
crew for being out and braving that win. We are in a press box, yes, with the windows open, but uh, those guys are really earning their pay today. That gives you a sense. Holding. Thank you very much. Offense, yes. <laughs> number 76, 10 yard penalty. John Champ, the guilty party from his right guard position. Check that. Chris Mayo, excuse me. And what Chris you're saying Mayo once again, for Eastern. Oh, what you're saying once again is offensive linemen getting beat to the inside and panicking and grabbing. You've just got to power step and take that defender where he wants to go and hope that your back is dynamic to cut off of you. Dynamic enough to cut off of your hip. Smith. Incomplete. Good coverage. El Zayat could not haul it in. And once again, that's your safety out of Blanche Ely High School in Florida, Jay Sean Prophet. And Prophet did a good job of keeping that backhand off of the back of El Zayat. Too often you see defenders in that position, in that trail position, get their hands on the back to try and propel themselves forward to be able to knock that football down. So a good job by Prophet not to get his hands on the back of the receiver and be able to reach around him and knock the ball down. Smith in the second half has not been as accurate with the football. Now for the game, 12 of 22 for 127 yards. And he is drilled, dropped at about the line of scrimmage. And once again, the left tackle, you're giving up that short corner. You've got to kick back. You see how those outside shoulders open? It, on the initial kick, that outside shoulder is open, so you've given a short corner to that defensive end. If he kicks straight back, now he's given the width of the pocket because you saw Smith trying to climb the pocket, which is what you want your quarterback to do in that position, but he had nowhere to climb because the pocket was shrunk because he didn't have the width. And James Esther got home. Third down, 20 yards to go. Screen pass to try and get some of that back. Good job by Jalen Jackson to pick up 12 yards on the screen. But that will bring up fourth down and bring out the punt team. And one of the things you talked about with Austin Smith not being as successful passing the ball in the second half, it's been because of that pass rush. And we've I've talked about it often with those tackles and the guards being stout. So, you know, you've got to give your quarterback time. And I think that's the thing that he has not had. And when he has had time, they've had coverage on the backside. But for the most part, he hasn't had the time that was necessary to get the to get the ball down the field. And what a punt. <laughs> that covered about 80 yards in the air from Tomasek with the win. We have just received word that Antonio Brown will not be back today. We'll talk more about that when we return. Geico makes car insurance as easy as loving Parmesan. Say when. Say when. Say when. When. <sighs> With 24-7 emergency roadside service, it's easy to Geico. Fresh ground pepper? Yes, please. Boom, 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 boom. Nissan has a car for everyone. Every driver who wants more. More turbo. More freedom. More electric. At Nissan, more is all we do. Glitzy, glammy, super snazzy, a real saucy boy, oh, dynamite, don't I know it, style maestro, thanks, it's Old Navy. Okay, get this right, and you get my free ticket to tonight's game. Right. Who is my all-time favorite receiver? Oh, oh, Larry, Larry Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald. Yes, Larry Fitzgerald. 
Larry hey, Fitzgerald. I heard you got an extra ticket to the game tonight. I would love to go. Uh, yeah, sure. It's all, it's all yours, Larry. Thanks, Billy. I'll meet you out front. What? Uh, uh, yeah, okay. It's Bob, but okay. Yeah. I don't even know your name, dude. I guess I'm Bill now. With Vivid Seats, when you buy 10 tickets, you can get your 11th free. Putter Mitchell Tomasek is quite a weapon for Eastern Michigan. He already has two punts this year of 70 yards or more. So what he just did was eh, 68 yards. No big deal. Yeah, it, it made me lose my whole train of thought. <laughs> when I saw the ball in the air, like, oh my goodness. And Forrest it was a is in mid-sentence, well. <laughs> and all of a sudden, huh? Well, you have to acknowledge something like that. <laughs> But uh, he would have preferred it had been 67 yards and covered, but it uh, made it into the end zone with the wind at his back. And so it's first and 10 from the 20 yard line. And how about those tough yards by the backup running back, Gavin Williams, in there now for Ontario Brown, who will not return. And we'll get to that Ontario Brown injury, but I tell you what, as an offensive lineman, when your running back runs the ball like he just did on that play, it kind of fires you up a little bit and, you know, gets you to go on. And I think that's what you're going to see with Coach Hammock and this offensive coordinator, Eric Eisenhower. They're going to challenge the offensive line now to drive the ball down the field, running the ball between the tackles. I mentioned the success he had during his three years as an Iowa Hawkeye. His best game was against then number 22 Kentucky for nearly 100 yards. Lombardi, nowhere to run. And I don't like that play right there. You need to hand the ball off to your back. You see right here, good penetration up the field by the defender, breaking up that play, and that's what stopped the play. A good job by number 47, Justin Jefferson, to get penetration early, and then Elijah Williams coming in to make that tackle. And so that'll bring up third down, five yards to go. They've got to get across the 30-yard line to keep the football. Every yard counts here in the fourth quarter with the clock running tied at 13. NIU 5 of 13 on third downs today. Lombardi decisive has his top receiver near the line to gain. It's going to be a first down with Trayvon Rudolph on the receiving end one more time. And that's what I like to see north and south. I don't like the east and west. Once again, you've got really good pursuit and you've got great lateral movement by both defensive line so I think you need to be north and south with your play calling as opposed to trying to get the ball out in the flat Rudolph six catches for 53 yards he's also rushed four times for 10 yards Williams bottled up for a short gain on first down, it's another tackle for Micah Coleman, who got off to such a good start to this football game today. And if you look at the defensive alignment on that play, you had five down defensive linemen lined up covering up all of the offensive linemen. This is when you have opportunities to get the matchups on the outside. See if they go back to Williams who went into fall camp last year as the number one running back for the Iowa Hawkeyes got hurt lost his spot transferred to Northern Illinois Lombardi still on his feet and still fighting but finally he goes down the pursuit was relentless by Eastern Michigan Peyton Price the nose tackle finally got him to the ground and Lombardi has to recognize that they're playing cover one one deep safety they've got everybody in the box five down defensive linemen you've got to be able to recognize it and understand you've got to go to that quick pass game once again being a veteran player like Lombardi you expect him to recognize that hold the snap count audible out of that and put a play in motion that is effective against everyone being in that box because if you get an, an offensive player at the second level there's no one there because everybody's coming downhill I got to mention Adrian Gonzalez as well was actually the first one to get Lombardi down to the ground tight coverage by Kempton shine as the ball was delivered to Jalen Johnson it's a catch at the 40 yard line and this is going to be an interesting play field is a completed pass short of the line of game Fourth down. I think you go for it. Uh, you know, this is a point in the game. You've got three minutes left. The clock is running. Your defense is playing well. 
I think you definitely go for it. But once again, you've got to challenge that offensive line. You know, you run behind Brock Lampy, number 49. We haven't said his name lately, but he's a guy on plays like this that you run behind. From under center, Lombardi straight up the middle, and the surge will give the Huskies a first down. And a good job by the offensive line. You see the surge. You see black helmets going forward. You see white jerseys moving backwards. You can't not play high on situations like this. The defensive line, the defensive linemen for Eastern Michigan were high on that play. You've got to basically get on all fours and bear crawl to uproot those linemen. And now if you're Eastern Michigan, the clock is a problem. Under three minutes to go. Can this defense get off the field? Flag comes. I think you're going to get a holding penalty. Once again, I don't like running outside of the tackles. I think they're more effective in between the tackles. Offense, number 79, 10-yard penalty, first down. When you run outside the tackles, what you're asking your offensive lineman to do is drop step and get reach blocks. And often, the defensive linemen are better athletes than the offensive linemen, or those linebackers are better athletes that you're asking those linemen to get to the edge on. So as an offensive lineman, when you're trying to reach those guys, you tend to reach out and grab those jerseys, and that is why they're getting these holding penalties when they're trying to get to the outside with that rushing attack. So they get pushed back 10 yards. Redo first down, first and 20. Screen pass, Rudolph, short game. Maybe got three or four yards. Second down and long. Now, what I look for at this point, if they're able to get a stop on second down, then I'll look for Eastern Michigan to start using those timeouts to preserve time and hopefully get the ball back with an opportunity to either get a field goal or get in scoring position. And I use been penalized 10 times for 85 yards today. And again, they're behind the chain, second down and long. Lombardi, shovel pass. Didn't fool anybody. Eastern Michigan was ready to make the play. Tim Grant Randall, the senior from Conroe, Texas, with a huge defensive play. And just as Forrest thought, Timeout called by Eastern Michigan with a precious 147 on the clock. Geico makes car insurance as easy as loving Parmesan. Say when. Say when. Say when. When. <sighs> with 24-7 emergency roadside service, it's easy to Geico. Fresh ground pepper? Yes, please. Boom, 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 boom. Nissan has a car for everyone. Every driver who wants more. More turbo. More freedom. More electric. At Nissan, more is all we do. At L'Oreal Group, we support innovative projects that help restore damaged ecosystems. More than 2 million acres of ecosystems will be restored by 2030. This is how we create the beauty that moves the world. Rain-X water repellency wiper blades apply the magic of Rain-X to your windshield so water beads up and flies away. The improved water beading technology lasts longer so you see clearly. Rain-X, outsmart the elements. Tourists. Tourists that turn into scientists. Tourists photographing thousands of miles of remote coral reefs that can be analyzed by AI in real time. So researchers can identify which areas are at risk and help life underwater flourish. The holidays are coming to the Home Depot with free delivery on over 2 million items. So let the prepping begin by dreaming a little bigger and lighting up your home with a lot more joy this season. Get holiday ready at the Home Depot. 
okay. Get this right, and you get my free ticket to tonight's game. Who is my all-time favorite receiver? Oh, oh, Larry, Larry Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald. Yes, Larry Fitzgerald. Larry hey, Fitzgerald. I heard you got an extra ticket to the game tonight. I would love to go. Oh, yeah, sure. It's all, it's all yours, Larry. Thanks, Billy. I'll meet you out front. What? Uh, yeah, okay. It's Bob, but okay. Yeah. He doesn't even know your name, dude. I guess I'm Bill now. With vivid seats, when you buy 10 tickets, you can get your 11th free. I think somebody should tell that guy he spilled mustard down in front of himself. Oh, I guess that's a hot dog costume as well. <laughs> Gotta stay warm any way you can today. <laughs> that is one creative outfit. <laughs> She's a smart young lady. Wrap yourself in a blanket and have somebody hold on tight. The wind continues to whip with under two minutes remaining and a key third down with Rocky Lombardi and the Huskies offense trying to get across midfield. They've got to get to the 48 yard line. Lombardi throws, has the distance. What a catch! Grayson Barnes going up and coming down with the football. And they decided to play man covers the defender never turned around to locate the football. Awesome job, Cameron Smith. You've got to turn around and locate that football to my, try and make a defensive play. 21 yards on a well-delivered football right on the money from Lombardi. That Clutch. could be a game-winning play. That pass incomplete. Off the hands of Trayvon Rudolph. So now with a minute 27 to go, Northern is very much in control of things. And if you're Northern, you don't have to get it all right now. Get eight, nine yards. You've got three timeouts left. You've got a minute and 27 seconds. You've got time to throw the ball all over the field. Don't try and get too much. You need to be looking at field goal uh, range right now as opposed to a touchdown. Of course, you would love to get a touchdown. You don't want to put it on the kicker, but you want to get at least into field goal range. Well, they are pretty close right now. Despite the win, Woodall already has a 39-yard field goal in this direction, and he is confident. Williams cuts it up. Now they're well within range. Can he get to the end zone? Knocked out of bounds at the two-yard line as Gavin Williams has Northern Illinois knocking on the door. And once again, the right side of that offensive line has done an excellent job of giving him the space that he needed. Potter and Champ all afternoon have done their job firing off the football. And you see Gavin Williams and the ability to get to the edge, plant that foot, get north and south, get those shoulders square, and the speed to get up the field. And now if you're the Eastern Michigan defense, do you just get out of the way and let them score? Uh, I've never liked that. But Neither I do I. But right now, I mean, you're in a really bad position. Lombardi just goes down to a knee. They want to exhaust the clock as they should and leave it to their kicker to win this football game. And I don't know if you necessarily want to leave it to the kicker, but what you want to do, thirty seconds in length. What you want to do is make them use those timeouts. I think you still want to get the touchdown, okay. but now you leave them with one timeout. So you want to make them use those timeouts. So just in case you do score and they get the ball back, they don't have any timeouts. So that makes their offense very predictive at that point. They have to either go with that long vertical game, hoping to get a pass interference or to the outside. So you kind of keep everything in front of you. So I'd like the idea of kneeling right there, making them use that timeout. Even if they score on this play, you will leave them one timeout as opposed to two. Good point, good point. Northern Illinois has three timeouts remaining. So no matter what comes in the next minute 16, they will have options. But the big run by Gavin Williams sets them up. 34 yards he picked up. He's got 80 yards on only seven carries for the day. Will Lombardi take a knee again, or will they try to punch it in with Williams behind him? Lombardi again takes a knee. He could have scored there, but chose not to. Now, I don't know, man. You're Charles playing with fire out. a little bit here. Eastern Michigan, their third and final of the half. Please reset the game. Well, like you said, you have now exhausted. Eastern
Western Michigan of its timeouts. Now, if I'm Coach Hammy, trying to score one time. I'm telling my offensive line, this is what we do summer workouts for. This is the off-season training. This is why we hit the sled right here. This is that sled work we do on Tuesdays on full pad days. You need to fire off with a flat back. You know, when that second foot comes down, that is when contact needs to be made. No holding penalties. If you can't block the guy, don't try and trip him. Don't grab him. Just let him go. Get a chicken wing out there, something. But don't hold. You don't want any penalties moving the ball back. You want to fire off, basically get in off on all fours in a four-point stance and uproot those defenders and push those white jerseys backwards. I think we'd be remiss if we didn't point out that Coach Hammock is going with short sleeves here in the second half. His quarterback tiptoes into the end zone for a touchdown. Not sure he wanted to, but he did. Rocky Lombardi puts his team up by six with a minute 11 to go. And that had to be the easiest touchdown rushing I've ever seen by a quarterback. We understand that they wanted to let him score. But the way he was tiptoeing into the end zone, almost like you said, the, do I score here? Yeah. Do I not? Woodle boots it through to make it a seven-point ball game. Once again, watch him. He's kind of tiptoeing like, do I score? Do I score? He's looking like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, might as well. Well, he had the game-winning walk-off touchdown run in overtime to start the season against Boston College. He may have just had his second game-winning touchdown run of the year. The Huskies with a bite here late in the fourth quarter. But now again, we need to point out, Eastern Michigan will get the football back with the wind at its back. What do you do? Well, first, you've got to secure the football on the kick. Well, but what are you thinking with no timeouts? Well, you got to be careful if you're Northern Illinois because, once again, this is a team that has three returns for touchdowns this season, five since 2020. So this is something that they do, something that Coach Hammock talked to us about during our coaches' meetings, that they've got to win special teams. They cannot allow this team to have a big special teams play. So that's the first thing you do. Then you think about what you want to do defensively, but you've got to make the play right here. A low kick taken by one of the up men. Across the 30, McMillan out of bounds. It'll be good starting field position with a minute six on the clock. And again, the Eagles are out of timeouts. So what you want to do as a defense, you want to keep everything in front of you. You want to keep two deep safeties, but you also want to keep all of the players. You give up, you know, the, the, the side. I mean, you give up the middle of the field. You don't want to give up anything on the sideline to allow the offense to get out of bounds and stop the clock. You want them to catch the ball in the middle of the field. Jalen Jackson is the running back standing alongside Austin Smith. At the snap, you expect the safeties to back up, keep everything in front of them. They've got to go 65 yards to try and force overtime. That would have been a good start. No flags. Incomplete, trying to find J.B. Mitchell. The no, coverage by Cyrus McGarrell, who has an interception already here tonight. And I'm surprised they're playing man coverage. They've got two deep safeties, but they're playing man coverage right now. But if you're going to play man, you've got to be able to get pressure on the quarterback. Can they get pressure with four pass rushers? Here's Smith under heavy pressure. The ball comes out. Picked up by Eastern Michigan. Mayo's got it. Still no whistle. Clock running under 50 seconds. They've got to hurry. Eastern gets a big break to pick up six yards and keep possession, but down to 40 seconds. And they can't clock it. They've got to try and get the first down. And they get that first down. Now they've got to hurry again. And once again, a defense for Northern Illinois. You've got to keep everything in front of you. El Zayat, the eight-yard pickup. Smith flag he is sacked ball comes loose northern has the football 
And Under 20 get, seconds to go. And I think they're going to get a holding penalty, so I think this is going to be Northern's ball, and they're going to win this football game. But that's the pressure. When you can get pressure with four pass rushes against five blockers, you're going to win every time because they've got everything covered up. You've got seven people back in coverage. And I agree with you. I think this is going to be a holding penalty that's going to be declined. The ruling on the field the is a fumble recovered by the defense. Holding. Offense, number 76. That penalty is declined. First down, Northern Illinois. And there you go. That'll be a game-winning play for the Huskies' defense. And once again, you've got to expect your five offensive linemen being able to block four defensive linemen because they've got seven back in the coverage. The quarterback has to find somewhere to go with the football. They had two deep safeties, and they had five guys in man coverage, and the quarterback had nowhere to go with the football. He had immediate pressure. A good job by this Northern Illinois defense. That was George Gums and James Esther who got after the quarterback, and I think that might be an interception. Smith just flipped it, and Devontae O'Malley comes up with a football, and whether it's a fumble recovery or an interception, at this point for Coach Hammock is immaterial. His team is about to win its third consecutive game. And what a great win for this program, the way that they gutted it out with this weather. You see Coach Hammock extremely excited. You got to love that for this program. Tough, hard-fought ball game by both teams. You hate to see a team lose, but you know one team has to lose. Great win for Northern Illinois. Well, Rocky Lombardi was not sure he wanted to score the game-winning touchdown as he tiptoed across the goal line, but uh, now as the clock runs down, everybody here in Husky Nation is happy that he did. Your final score, Northern Illinois 20, Eastern Michigan 13. We have Coach Hammett coming over to join us. So don't go anywhere. The Huskies get the win to improve to 3-1 and one in league play. With their third straight win, now 4-4 four and four on the year. Coach Hammett, congratulations. You told us this week that your defense was your team's backbone again here today. How about that finish? No, they play, they play right side. I mean, for four quarters, we knew it was going to be a four-quarter battle. Uh, NACWEST game. Uh, couldn't be more proud of those guys. Couldn't be more proud of our coaches. Uh, what, a, what a fantastic game. Coach Rick, man, talk about that third down play. You had a timeout. Huge play, third and I think 21, and you were able to get the ball in and get, you know, that first down. Talk about that play. No, that was a big play by Grayson Barnes. Uh, just understand this. Uh, you know, he took a visit to Eastern Michigan before us, and they didn't want him. And we wanted him, and he made the biggest play of the game. But Grayson Barnes is a tremendous player uh, for us, and uh, that, that, that won the game. I mean, what, 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 I mean I'm speechless. speechless. And, and then what were you telling Rocky Lombardi on first and goal, second and goal, third and goal? Do you go in? When do you go in? He tiptoed in for the winning touchdown. No, what that, was the thought process? That was like, that was like a, a, a sneak turtle. We wanted to get it a half a yard. Taking me with the understanding that they had timeouts. We wanted to get their timeouts out. Um, and what a, that's great management by Rocky, our officer staff, uh, and, and obviously the defense made a play to win the game at the end. Well, congratulations. Now 3-1. and one. You keep pace in the West. A huge win. Three wins in a row. We'll see you next week. Hey, go Huskies. With his alma mater, like we said at the top of this broadcast, that man bleeds Cardinal in black. Well, you got to love it for Coach Hammock, and, and we talked about that. It's, it, it, it's him. He embodies everything about Northern Illinois University football, and you see the joy and the exuberance on his face, and you see the energy, him jumping up and down with those players. I'm sure that locker room is going to be ecstatic, and they're going to have a great post-game conversation, but a great win for this program, a tough, gritty win for this program. And here is the last drive that led up to the one-yard game-winning touchdown run by Rocky Lombardi. Well, what I like about this, first of all, that third down snatch right there. Great catch. And then the run right there by Williams to get down. 
to the one yard line, and we talked about this the easiest touchdown we've probably ever seen. <laughs> and you know, it's almost like nobody didn't want to score up. It's like, okay, I gotta get these seven points to put that pressure on them. Because remember this, Doug, if you only get three, now you put Eastern Michigan in a position where all they need is a field goal to tie the game. Yep. So you wanted to put that pressure on them by scoring that touchdown. Job well done for the Huskies of Northern Illinois. They get the win. For Forrest Connolly, I'm Doug Sherman saying so long from DeKalb. Our final score, 20 to 13 Huskies. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. GEICO makes car insurance easy. Enjoy your flight. You too. As easy as saying the wrong thing. Dad, why would you say that? Why would you say that? Are we leaving or? I thought I knew you. With an app that puts your policy in your pocket, it's easy to GEICO. It's not how airports work, man. Boom, 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 boom. Nissan has a car for everyone. Every driver who wants more. More turbo. More freedom. More electric. At Nissan, more is all we do. The holidays are coming to the Home Depot with free delivery on over 2 million items. So let the prepping begin by dreaming a little bigger and lighting up your home with a lot more joy this season. Get holiday ready at the Home Depot. You are not related. There's no ancestry connecting you. But look how similar you are. You work at it. You keep going. You may not be brothers and sisters, but if tough were a gene, you would be.